everyone, and welcome to the Weekly Twist podcast broadcast. Before we officially start the podcast recording, I do want to remind everyone that this is a live video stream. Yay! And so if Natalia and I say bad words, or if we, um, I don't know, if something happens to the internet or whatever, and we have to have technical things happen, then uh, there will be editing. And the podcast is fully edited, so you can subscribe to the podcast and get the fully edited program once that is published, which will probably be tomorrow afternoon. Anyway, don't forget to click all of the likes and the stars and the notifications and make the algorithms like us, share widely. And uh, Natalia, you ready to go? Yes, I am. Let's do it. Okay, let's make this thing happen. Woo -doo -doo. Starting the show in three, two, this is Twist. This Week in Science, episode number 951, recorded on November 15th, 2023. Should science monkey around? Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Kiki, and tonight on the show, we are going to fill your heads with monkeys, sperm, and seawater. But first, Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. How many of us mailed our cereal box tops and hard-earned allowances to places unknown in order to stare at a small plastic aquarium of sorts in the hopes that we would be the first to observe sea monkeys in all their undersea glory, only to be underwhelmed at the sight of brine shrimp? undulated in, in the fetid water before us? Or were you of the sort who thrilled at the sight of anything at all? How did these beings appear? What were they really? Who am I to scorn the magic of life? As media tempts and taunts us with promises of amazing sensational sorts, there is a lesson here that we can all be skeptics and yet maintain our ability to be amazed. It is a lesson that we take seriously here on this Week in Science, coming up next. I've got the kind of mind that can't get enough. I want to learn everything. I want to fill it all up with new discoveries that happen every day of the week. There's only one place to go to find the knowledge I seek. I want to know. Good science, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of This Week in Science. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode. There's a great show in the making right now. I am joined by the lovely, the inimitable Natalia Regan. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good Let's evening. Our, good evening. We are doing all right on the show tonight. I mean, it's just you and me, right? We're going to... Oh. Just two broads talking science. I'm all about it. You know, we're gonna science the heck out of it. Here we go. Yeah. I mean, if anybody is not counting, I'd love to find out how many different accents we uh, in engage in <laughs> throughout the show tonight. It's that's a damn good idea, Kiki. I I, I I sign on. I mean, it could be something that we should really think about for a second. Okay, oh I my have God. stories. <laughs> stories tonight <laughs> on this week's show. I'm a serious newscaster, Natalia, come on. I have news stories about sperm counts, monkey melds, seawater samples, sick social finches, my sibilance is out of control, CRISPR and cholesterol, uh, avoiding alcohol, and, well, you, oh my gosh, primatologist, ah! anthropologist, comedian, self-described weirdo. I I'm mean, so guilty, guilty, yeah. <laughs> And you just listed all my favorite things. You got monkeys, you got sperm counts, cholesterol, CRISPR, you, even you sea monkeys. You know, I, I, I did so many sea some monkeys. field work on the uh, beach. I was looking for sea monkeys, which you could make a little tiny shrimp scampi out of those brine shrimp. That would really. be very tight. I mean, maybe you could dry them out after they've hatched from the eggs and then sprinkle them on top of the scampi. Just a little spoonful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brine ship. Don't, don't knock it till you kind of try it. Yeah. 
Yeah. I wonder if any little kids have ever... Anyway, this is getting... <laughs> Everyone, uh, we are so excited to have you here tonight. And as we jump into the show, I want to remind our people out there that uh, you can subscribe to this program. We are a live streaming web program, Wednesday evenings, 8 p.m. Pacific time-ish, on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And the podcast is published all good places that podcasts are found. So look for This Week in Science all the places you like to find your podcast subscribe share with friends and if you need to know things that you've forgotten since i started this little dialogue uh just go to twist.org it's our website look for this week in science ready to jump in natalia oh yes i was born yeti let's do it <laughs> yes okay we're gonna start i've i've thrown in a bunch of stories tonight uh with natalia in mind um and yeah, you know, we'll see where we take these things. Ah. First off the dock tonight, chimeric Chinese monkeys born and, uh, well, there were one, one monkey was born. They, not mm. a lot of them made it through this little experiment, but researchers have been trying to create chimeric organisms. Those are organisms that have multiple uh, origins, parental origins. There's lots of cellular DNA from multiple individuals within each cell of the body. And any one cell could potentially have mommy daddy DNA, or it could have mommy mommy DNA, or mommy mommy daddy DNA, or anyway, <laughs> it could be a mixture. And historical efforts in uh, chimeric monkey work have resulted in maybe 1% or definitely less than 10% chimerism in the embryos that have resulted. In this particular study that was just published in Cell, the researchers uh, highlight their, this is the title of the paper, live birth of chimeric monkey with high contribution from embryonic stem cells. So, what did they do in this study? What was happening? Why is this important now? The researchers have uh, taken the monkey parental cells, created a blastocyst. So they, they made it, they, they created little IVF baby monkeys, created a blastocyst in a dish, and then they took additional cells from another individual and added them to the blastocyst that was in the dish. And in adding these cells to the blastocyst, they resulted in a lot of non-viable embryos. And one of the embryos that made it out of the dish state was implanted into an adult uh, mother monkey to, to gestate the embryo. One little embryo resulted. This little monkey embryo uh, turned out to be very successful in terms of the chimerism. So up to 90% of some tissues were chimeric in nature. So they contained a lot of the DNA from the other additional individual that was added to the cells. And so they're excited about this, but it was like a uh, really like one out of 10 success rate for the number of embryos that they created, the other ones did not work. And now I think it's a question of them trying to figure out what happened that was super successful with this one particular embryonic method, why it worked so well um, versus the other ones. All that to say that this little embryonic, the, the, the monkey that resulted, that was birthed, it only lived 10 days. So itself, it was not a viable offspring. It didn't last very long. So it's still not, uh, you know, it's not going to work really well for like, we're going to make little <laughs> embryonic chimer chimers of all sorts of cells from all over the place. We're not at that state at this point in time. Um, it's not a viable, successful method. But the fact that they had this one success that was limited in its success it is uh, pushing them to move forward to see, uh, you know, their idea is, can we create animal chimers moving forward that have synthetic DNA or gene edited chromosomes 
in order to uh, study disease or study particular, instead of, you know, having knockout mice or whatever, can we create non-human primate chimers with tissues that are not human, but maybe partially human. So we can study some aspects of how different uh, developmental or disease states occur in these, in these situations. What do you think? Oh man, it's, it's fascinating. <laughs> and it's, again, it, it Again, I, I'm very, my big question is why, you know, and if they really do think they could do some uh, really, I guess, good research that's going to benefit, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people's potentially, uh, then maybe it is worth it. But again, the cost is a lot of monkeys are dying. A lot of them aren't going to survive. Um, and also some of the, uh, I don't know, I just feel like the ethic, the ethical problems are, are are pretty big here, and we saw it sometimes with cloning too. When you had mm -hmm. uh, people cloning their dog, I did a podcast years ago when Barbara Streisand decided to clone her dog, and uh, it only a lot of the clones don't live very long. I don't know how exactly. Barbara, how long Barbara yeah. Streisand's dogs live for. I feel like Babs would take such good care of her care of her clone <laughs> but Extra still, yeah, yeah, you know, but it's never yeah. going to be the same, right? So I don't know, I. I it's fascinating. And I actually, it was funny. I, I did a, a, a show with somebody last week and we were talking, taking questions from males about dating. And there was a, a thing going around on the internet that anytime a woman had sex with a man, they would absorb their, that when they got, if they did not use a condom, they would absorb right. the male sperm. And there was that male uh, micro uh, chimerism. And that I ex had to explain that it was not necessarily because, you know, they were absorbing sperm. It doesn't work that way. Like, no, they found, yeah. you know, the DNA in the, in the brain. I, I, I just like, I could see like the, the buddy road comedy where, you know, the road trip comedy where the two sperms are like in a car and like moving right along and just like taking the road trip up to the brain. But it was about uh, more if the uh, the woman had had a male fetus inside of her or if perhaps her mother was pregnant and there was a male twin or, um, you know, it, it, there could be a myriad of reasons, but it had no nothing to do with the men that someone slept with. But again, right. it, it, I think it's a fascinating idea that there is DNA inside of us that might, might not necessarily be from our mother and our father. Uh, yeah, but again, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's a huge, I, that's a really interesting uh, point to make, though, is that our, our, the way that our, our bodies work and the way that the reproductive system specifically works is, is so interesting in that extent, especially, especially for women who have a uterus where cells can gestate and, like you said, sometimes not make it all the way, be reabsorbed, or maybe there's a twin or maybe, you know, there are things yeah. that occur that are odd. And then yeah. suddenly you've got different DNA in you. It, it's, but you're, you know, you're fine. Our bodies go, okay, let's work with this. <laughs> you're stuck with your kids for your whole entire life down to the cellular level. Uh, Damn it, Kinky. Uh, what do you think? What do you think about the ethical implications of this? I mean, do you think it's a good idea? What, what's, where do you, where do you stand? I'm, I'm kind of torn on this one. Um, you know, the, the extent that they are moving in this direction, I understand wanting to understand more about human human development and human genetics and how things work together and not necessarily being able to study that in humans because there's you know even further ethical issues that go into okay we're going to you know you can't have people get pregnant and then study their babies for science this is this is not the way it works because hopefully we have better ethics now but at the same time I'm looking at this and primates and stop me if I'm wrong but there are so many commonalities, which is why we're studying them as models of human genetics and human development and disease. But there's so many other commonalities that is just, how is it ethically right to be able to, to push this forward when we have uh, organoids that yeah. we can, you know, cell systems that we can study in dishes, that there are other ways that we can, that we can look at this. No, I agree. And I, as yeah. somebody who studies primates, I love them, of course. And I, but yeah. I also try to temper that love with also rationalism and, and, mm -hmm. you know, could there be a benefit here? But I also think that, you know, there, if there is an alternative, why not focus on that alternative first? And, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, 
for instance, like macaques are the second most widely distributed primate on Earth. There's generally no sort shortage of macaques on this right. planet. People talk about Planet of the Apes, and I always say, no, 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 no. It's going to be macaque attack 110. <laughs> um, percent But I, I believe I want to see that movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Oh, I feel like I've lived that. <laughs> I I volunteered in an animal sanctuary with a macaque that I love her dearly, but. When she comes out, I run the other way because, oh. yeah, they're intense. Yeah, but scary. But yeah, uh, I think Macaca uh, follicularis is, uh, is um, I believe they were put on IUCN as like a threatened, not quite, they're not endangered. Mm. There's there's still a lot of them, right? But I yeah. believe, one, like something that, I, I, I don't think they're doing it on endangered monkeys at this point. But like, again, uh, you know, we are moving into a time when we're ca causing the sixth mass extinction. Maybe we should be moving away from, uh, you know, doing experiments on animals that are, are vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, yeah. I mean, and especially if it's, we're only really maintaining them so that we can have them as laboratory populations. What's up with that? <clears throat> Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I, 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 look, I, I'm I like the human side of science, man. You know, yeah. It's it gotta you gotta maintain your humanity. Yeah, I don't know. I think you know this study. Hopefully, it will uh, give these researchers information moving forward, so that they lose fewer embryos, so that there is more success. Um, but at the same time, um, what is the uh, what is the value of what we learn versus the uh, ethics of you know working with the animals in the first place yeah and once what yeah. if that monkey does live past 10 days right then what what right yes i mean everybody was all upset about the uh the girls that were gene edited in china we don't know what happened to them they disappeared very quickly um the embryo human embryos that were gene edited several years back they're little toddlers by now little probably almost in kindergarten but you know we have no idea like what is their quality of life now they are protected now their lab you know they, they're probably yeah. being studied themselves i mean it's just such a um this whole it, this whole thing is a very interesting dystopian road right Ooh. what's the road that we're going down here i don't know i don't know uh, speaking of gene editing, um, researchers have recently not studied in monkeys, what they did before, but now because of work that was done in monkeys, they were able to study it in humans. Researchers just presented uh, their work in the last week. Uh, it's a study published in, uh, related to a study published in the journal Circulation earlier this year, but um, they were at a conference this last week and presented their work on using CRISPR base editing to edit a hereditary form of high cholesterol. So there's a gene that leads people, they're born naturally, have high cholesterol, have heart problems, uh, can result in a lot of health issues from that. Um, they took 10 people into their trial that was, like I said, based on monkeys previously, My mice, monkeys, and now humans. Uh, they edited a gene in the liver and this particular gene, so it's located to a specific tissue. It's not throughout the body. This is uh, CRISPR base editing as opposed to gene editing. So instead of editing, cutting out a whole gene and replacing it, they've just gone in and shifted one little tiny base pair inside of that gene. They shifted one thing from like an A to a C or A to a G. So it turns this gene that's called PCSK9 off. And when that gets turned off, uh, LDL cholesterol is controlled better. Anyway, uh, in their trial, they found that these people who have familial hypercholesterolemia, that out of the 10 of them, there were a couple who had uh, significant reductions in their cholesterol levels. And this has been ongoing long enough for them to want to talk about it. So um, uh, there was a control group. Nobody had any issues related to health. So this is like the first trial of human trials. There's like no health issues. There's no negative side effects as far as anybody has been able to tell. And at this point, they're just checking to make sure it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> like, is it gonna, is it gonna hurt people? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's always the the next step. Yeah, I mean, yeah. again, it's this idea of wanting getting 
accidentally shutting something off or on, you know, it's kind of like when you play God, you really do run the risk of, of making some un, uh, unintentional changes yeah. as well, where you, but you might not find out until, I don't know, five, 10, 15 years down the line, but it, it sounds good yeah. so far. You yeah. Know? So that's something that they don't know. I mean, if you're just changing this gene in the liver, hypothetically, there's really no reason that this should change anything related to offspring. This should not be changing mm -hmm. anything related to reproduction, shouldn't be changing the germ cells that go on to create other human beings. Um, so this would not be a heredity, hereditary gene change that's happening. This is just a treatment for individuals. Um, the next question is whether or not there's an increase in cancer risk, um, whether there are off-target edits that lead to these other issues that we don't know about. So now we're just just looking, but it's very exciting. Apparently it was a very successful early test. Uh, the two patients who got it, it was dose related. So the highest dose saw a 55% decrease in LDL cholesterol and uh, the next highest dosages saw 39 and 48%. But these are individuals, 10 individuals, half of them were control and half of them were test. So this is such a small sample size, we can make no inferences really at all. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a bigger sample size, Kiki. Yeah, it is. It's small. Right? <laughs> oh, gosh, darn it. Yeah. It, and also one of the things that the, the article mentioned was just they wanted to see if this could be passed down to offspring, if this if this gene edit, which I thought was interesting that they even, okay, if that's what they're considering could be a, a, a potential response, that would be, that would be fascinating. Right? Yeah. Really fascinating. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you have a targeted tissue, you have your targeted system, but it's biology. Let's mess yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And the question is, you know, even if it doesn't do any of these things for 99% of the people, maybe there's 1% that their biology is just a little bit different that it does. So these are all the questions that until there's a much larger group of people willing to undergo the treatment or, I don't know, one Maybe time, somebody's, Yeah. Yeah, one-time treatment versus uh, cholesterol and heart medication every day for the rest of your life. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean I, that's one of the things that I I have a friend that it's it's a, he does not have uh, he doesn't have a genetic predisposition to high cholesterol, but he did he actually was about to do a movie and he they would not insure him because his his blood pressure was so high and oh, his no. wife happened to be vegan. And so he tried a vegan diet just because he was like, well, shoot, why not? <laughs> I just try this. And he's, you know, uh, his name's MC Ganey. You've probably seen him in a bunch of stuff. And he's one of the sweetest guys. But I was just like, because he just doesn't, he's very gruff. I was like, you know, but a sweetheart, but gruff. And I was like, you're a vegan? And he's like, yeah, saved totally my life. Helps. Wow. So, yeah. Three months later, he, his doctor was like, you can get, you can stop. Not only is your blood pressure down, you can stop taking your meds. But That's there amazing. are those people that don't have that option because they're just, you know, again, it's a genetic thing that they're just going to have high blood pressure forever. So that's a, mm -hmm. an option. But who knows? It might make somebody spontaneously combust. I don't know. I don't, you know, <laughs> the jury is still out. Highly unlikely, but possible. But <laughs> just throw it out there. Of, just the possibilities. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but it's an interesting, it's a good way to go, right? In the in the yeah. scheme of things, like, you very know, it's fast, an very fast, hot, very fast, super hot. Yeah, super hot. And, you know, a great biopic. I would watch that. <laughs> and then they burned. And then they exploded. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> Not explosions, but <laughs> seawater is my next story to talk to you about. We love seawater. This is where, I don't know. Where the sea, <laughs> the sea monkeys and the brine shrimp love to be. No, uh, researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Marine Biology in Bremen have just published in ISME communications with their collaborators their work on uh, looking at horizontal gene transfer in organisms. And this is like the most fascinating thing to me. We've talked about uh, horizontal gene transfer before. It's this idea that little microbes, they don't really care where their DNA comes from. And they're like, oh, it's like a pack of, you take a pack of cards. You want one? Pick one. Okay, take one. Yes. And Or they're like, I'm going to barf my DNA everywhere and then someone will pick it up and that'll be awesome. And so it's just like really exciting 
microbe DNA soup down there. And um, when you think about going in the ocean and traipsing about in those beautiful waves, just think about the number of millions, actually millions of microbes, little viruses, bacteria, other things that are swimming around in just a single drop of seawater. And that whole sea out there is full of these little things. These researchers determined that this is the first time they've determined this as well. They went and they looked at the seawater and they're like, we expect to see viruses, things related to viruses and microbes and all their DNA. And this is what we're going to see. And then they were like, there is a bunch of junk in here that we're not <laughs> expecting. And like, what is happening here? And what they've determined is that uh, this junk that they, that they didn't expect to be seeing um, is from extracellular vesicles. Mm. Extracellular vesicles have uh, become uh, more commonly talked about in, uh, in human biology. Uh, the fact that neurons and microglia can sometimes communicate using these little packets, little membrane bound packets of DNA or proteins or nucleids or, you know, just little bits of information and they can go and merge with another cell, they bloop out, and then they float around little balloons, little water balloons of DNA or whatever. And then they bloop and they grow into another cell and the cell goes, yay! And if it's a microbe, it goes, I really like your DNA. I'm going to try that on for size. And then, <laughs> yes, and suddenly they're sharing and it's wonderful. Uh, but this is, to me, just extremely thrilling, the idea that it's not just during uh, replication that these bacteria might be sharing their DNA, doing, but there are these little packages of information that they're constantly sending around. Why they're sending them around, we have no idea. But these extracellular vacuoles full of DNA are allowing horizontal gene transfer. All this is just floating around in the ocean. This information, it's a sea full of information out there. <laughs> <laughs> Ha! I know. But I'm very no. excited about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I read this and I was really fascinated because, well, first of all, I think it's like a crime scene's worst nightmare. You know what I mean? It's just yes. like, I don't know where my, I don't know where my DNA is right now. Like my DNA could be anywhere. <laughs> it could be in that guy. It could be in it's that guy. It's contaminating. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's your Lord. But, uh, but on top of that, just the idea of uh, looking at sometimes i'll take you know samples of of fresh water seawater and d look mm -hmm. at in the dna in it like an environmental dna sample i know that they were trying to do that i've hosted a bigfoot show years ago like one does mm -hmm. and i've as done you a lot do. of as you do you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh I've, so I've, I've done a lot of like cryptid stuff since then. And that's one of the things they talk about with like Loch Ness, especially like, oh, we're going to just take a, you know, environmental sample, like take a sample of, 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 of Loch Ness water. But it's like in that case, you know, you don't know exactly where this, I mean, in, in a lake, you know, contained in one place, you probably have a certain amount or, well, I don't know, who knows if someone takes a dip in that lake, maybe they're taking a little snip off your, your little little sample off you who knows i mean that's an interesting question i mean we're constantly sloughing dead cells out yeah. into the environment but those are dead cells so they should not have active dna but um you know what information is still just information just begging to be picked up um but yeah hair. i mean i think this yeah <laughs> right hair skin all of saliva. it saliva i've coughed up a lot of seawater before i'm oh, i'm geez. just gonna you know like i've got wiped out before and did yeah. you did you absorb it Probably, probably. Yeah. I've, I'm, I don't know how many I'm, I'm a, you know what I am? I am, I'm filled with 550 million sea monkeys. That's what I am. I'm just a bunch of brine shrimp. I'm a bunch <laughs> of brine shrimp in a trench coat. That's what I am, Kiki. Brine, no, brine shrimp in a flesh suit. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Dear Lord. Uh, well, anyway, these researchers have now determined that uh, because of this really interesting discovery related to uh, extracellular DNA that researchers should now not just talk about extracellular DNA, but when they're looking at uh, environmental DNA specifically, they should be also looking for this protected extracellular DNA, and they are calling it by a new name, PEDNA. It's a, a new uh, name for the category that they are putting forward so that uh, people in the research scene will be using the same terminology so it's not just non-virus like particles 
but actually its own uh, entire category of material that has its own uses uh, biologically and environmentally. This is so cool. Oh man, I just right? I, I, I just like the idea. I, I mean, this is a cartoon I want to watch. I, I would absolutely <laughs> watch this. This is, I mean, like extra cell, you know, like get real down to the, you know, micro level of squ SpongeBob. Okay. That's what I want to see. SpongeBob at the extracellular mm -hmm. DNA yep. level. Oh yep. my gosh. He's breathing it in and the sun yeah. is breathing it out. And, <laughs> oh, suddenly his friend is swimming in the SpongeBob DNA. Oh my gosh. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> We're swimming in all sorts of things. We don't like to think about it. And we're learning more and more about all the stuff that affect us. Uh, we think, oh, but I just breathe air. It's great, whatever. But, you know, there are all sorts of things in our environment that we're finding out are not so great for us. Uh, this last week, researchers dropped this incredible study in the Journal of Environmental Health Perspectives. It analyzed 25 studies conducted, conducted over the last 25 years. Really robust meta analysis of the field of understanding how insecticides impact male sperm count. And the news is not great, gentlemen. The more insecticide that you are in contact with, the worst it's bad. Uh, the worst it's bad? What am I think? I can't even speak anymore. The worst <laughs> it is for your little swimmers. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking a lot of a lot of sea tonight. We've got sea men. We've mm -hmm. got or, you know sea sea water. We've got sea monkeys. Sea I mean, we're just covering. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to be classy, but I'm I'm really uh, I'm failing miserably. <laughs> just keep swimming. Just keep just swimming. keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Uh, the researchers looked at a whole bunch of studies and threw a whole bunch of studies out because they were biased or they had uh, bad poor sample sizes. They did uh, not. They didn't control for things well, but the pooled effect at estimate uh, remained negative across all the meta-analyses uh, that the different kinds of insecticides, specifically organophosphates and N-methylcarbamates, reduce sperm concentration. And so this is not still causal. Nobody's ever done a prospective study on this going, hey, men, go out and spend time with insecticides and we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's more retrospective where they go, oh, how much time did you spend there? And then they find out that they spent a lot of time or a little time and then they, <laughs> they, they count things. Um, part of it also is looking at the not just numbers, but the quality of the sperm. So quality of sperm, which is really important. Numbers are not always what counts. It's also how strong those sperm can how swim. many tails how many heads are they swimming in circles yeah. look i study primates we talk uh, about chimpanzee sperm quality compared to human male sperm quality and no offense to the males listening or watching that it, the, human males don't have the best sperm quality or those with humans with testicles do not have the best sperm quality yeah compared to say other non-human primates like chimpanzees where you've got a lot of male male competition and i'm going to slowly back out of my primatologist mode why would you do that okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> don't back down don't let back me away. talk let me talk about sperm oh, no but yes. it's but it is fascinating you know and how and the things that can affect and and how long term this can last yeah I mean, and the one thing that we do know is like this, what they've seen so far is like a lot of these studies were like single counts of individuals. So this wasn't at looking at a single individual over time. So part of this also is not understanding what kind of benefits come from reduced uh, interaction with insecticides. Yeah. So does it get better? Because sperm are not created like eggs. They are constantly produced over a man's lifetime. And so uh, environmental changes can impact the quality of the sperm. All right. And that brings us to my last first story of the show, which um, comes out of a case study led by Southern Illinois University from Illinois. Yes. These researchers published in the International Journal of Paleopathology. What do they do in paleopathology, Natalia? They study old diseases, Kiki. <laughs> Yes, they do. So, really old stuff. <laughs> in this particular case, they were looking at really old ovaries. Uh, these researchers 
We're looking at mummies from Egypt and uh, found one of the oldest examples of teeth in an ovary, which is what we would call a teratoma because it's technically cancerous because it's growing in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, this teratoma uh, is identified as an ovarian teratoma. The young woman was an 18 to 21 year old who was not elite, but it was kind of upper class. She was, it was a more adorned non-elite burial in a place called Amarna in Egypt. And this is uh, one of the oldest, the fifth case ever determined in the archaeological record and the only one reported from Pharaonic Egypt or Africa. This is from the mid 14th century BCE. And very likely it's, poss it, it's possible that the, the young woman died from the condition or uh, issues related to the condition, but there's no way of knowing whether that's the case or whether it was something else that led to her death, but they don't believe that she would have known that she had teeth in her ovary at that time. The molar of this story, Kiki. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, let's get, we're on yeah. the cusp of greatness. No, that this, <sighs> any I know, I'm sorry. Let me get to, to the root. on that one for a yeah. little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let me get to the root of the issue. So we've got a, no, anytime I hear stories about this, I, I had a friend recently that actually had an ovary removed that um, is, is similar. It's the, I forget, excuse me, I can't remember the exact name of the, of the, it's like a, a teratoma where it does grow, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that uh, can grow hair and teeth. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the stuff of nightmares, right? Uh, but at the same time, it's not absolutely, it's not that rare, right? It, these things right. happen. And um but you just don't want it to happen to you. Exactly. <laughs> you just, <laughs> you if just... I may be so bold. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, it, you know, these yeah. old, in the olden days, if there's a, an issue in the pelvic cavity or something like, and, and somebody could see inside of you at any point and they saw teeth or hair or other, like people would be like, you're a witch. There's you're a witch. Wrong. You're a witch. The superstitions would come in. It wasn't saying she's a witch. Informed. Yep. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what they were saying. <laughs> she's that not a witch. witch. <laughs> <laughs> she turned me into a newt. Yeah, so <laughs> if you did a necropsy, if they actually did find it, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, if she's already dead, so, you know, she can't even defend herself for being a witch. <laughs> it's really messed up. Uh, and this is why, again, women really do get the short end of the the, the old the old gender stick. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, I again, I, and also what I, I think about too when I hear stories like this is the amount of pain that people have dealt with. I know that they've there was homeopathic Historic remedies, yeah. but just how many times do we pop an Advil or two and be like, oh, I just have this headache. I mean, you know, people were dealing with major infections and you know tumors and all sorts of a lot of the things that we deal with today moments. right yeah. but they didn't have this Would kill us yeah. yeah exactly here chew on this willow bark you'll be fine it's great i have had so many root canals because I, I got hit by a truck when i was 25 again like you do you get hit by a truck when you're 25 Ooh. it's just it's just what happens but i, but I landed on my head amazing Thank you. I did You're land welcome. on my head, which explains a lot, Ugh. but I cracked teeth. And so I've had about 14 oh, root God. canals and I would be dead. I would straight up be dead. I would have abscess, you know, uh, tooth one after, you know, like, I, well, first of all, I wouldn't have been, yeah, I definitely would have been hit by a truck if I lived in ancient days, but still. Probably not. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> this is wild. This is, I don't, this is absolutely wild. The image I've put up on the screen yes. just now. Yes. So I have uh, shared, for those on the podcast listening later, I've shared an image of a uh, teratoma in the tissues around the uterus near the ovaries. Um, and it's really in the image, they've just put like big blurpy things that kind of look like mol molars within the uterus. They do. They look like the uterine big walls. popcorn, like buttered they popcorn. Look, really, <laughs> to be honest, coated. Yes, I got stuck in my teeth. I was talking about. 
Need some floss. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it just, I, I think your your point is to be well, is well taken, that, you know, now where once upon a time in Egypt, this young woman uh, may, have, may have died related, from infections related to this condition, today if it can be picked up, people can have surgeries that can help them so that it doesn't impact their lives moving forward. Yeah. So we are very lucky to be where we are and when we are. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and also, teeth were growing in ovaries like 4,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, 14, yeah, long time ago. <laughs> right. Dear Lord. The was there a man. tooth fairy? What, what happens when you lose a, a tooth? I'm sorry. You know, I'm going to go now. <laughs> I'm a terrible human, and um, it's been a long day. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. What was it? There was another, uh, somebody made a joke recently about like a reverse tooth fairy, but you like kidnap people and throw tooth teeth on the bed where you kidnap them from. <laughs> Leave a bunch of teeth like candy. <laughs> it is a weird, it is, it is like trafficking body parts. Do you not realize that we teach our children it's okay to, to, to sell body parts? Like yeah, some what's stranger. next, a kidney? Like, you know what I mean? You start with <laughs> your, you know, premolars and then. And then no, it's okay. You can't it's look okay. without your pancreas. Kathy, okay. go to sleep. Some stranger's going to come in and steal a tooth from under your pillow while you're sleeping at night. They'll give you money. That's great. Go to sleep. Sleep well. That's good. That's late stage <laughs> capitalism for you, kid. You know? <laughs> Seriously. I saved all my teeth. I started, I waited, I got, I started losing them late. And I, so I started like, 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 like hoarding them. And but not you had your baby them teeth my... until you were twenty two. Like no, like fifteen. Oh, but still, oh, I kept wow. them, and I, like I was gonna put them all. And then, I, but even at that age, I knew that it wasn't real. But I was gonna put them all under my pillow and cash out big. That was my <laughs> all that at was... once. <laughs> mo money, mo money. <laughs> Making it rain. Oh Thanks, my god! <laughs> such a weirdo. Oh, <sighs> thank but you yeah. for being that. Uh... I'm glad you're a weirdo. Thanks, I me really too. Am. I'm glad you're a weirdo. I mean, you, you didn't say you're a weirdo, but you're a good kind of, you know. No, I'm a, I'm a weirdo. I really hope that everybody who watches and listens to this show, like, uh, they understand just how much of a weirdo. I don't know if they do. I I try to be very normal. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Everyone, if you're just joining in right now, Natalia Regan is my incredible guest this evening. She is an example of, let me say, the best that science communication has to offer. She successfully straddles comedy and science in so much of her work. And honestly, like for years, I kind of followed Natalia in like a little comedy sitcom fandom of my own making. Um, but anyway, I've always appreciated the comedy, but also the candor that she brings forth on important issues related to health, like boobs and butts, and mammograms, and these important things in life. Very important. Um, yeah, but I've been an incredible fan of the more recent shorts that you've been producing for TikTok and Instagram and these little bits of content that you've been putting out and everyone's like, I'll share. I'm like, ah, oh, friends, you must know Natalia. She's great. But anyway, um, I do at this point need to uh, start a video to introduce you all to uh, to Natalia. Uh, it's making me want to uh, to sign in. Do I have to sign in? I don't want to sign in. Do I have to <laughs> sign in? I'm gonna sign in. Log in. No, we're gonna make this work. Gosh darn it! It's going to be great. I'm gonna start it over. Which video is? I'll just be, reenactment. It's your introduction video. Hold on. Aww. You introduce yourself, and you're. I'm gonna let you. Hello. There. I'm going to let you introduce yourself in just one moment here. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Refresh. Let's go. And we're making it good. Oh no. Gosh darn it. Religious, Hi. primatologist, comedian, mother of dragons, professor, podcaster, TV show host. Oh, I also make art with my boobs. And weirdo. Essentially, my passion is to make science funny. Yes, I use humor to make science topics more digestible for the masses. You may have seen my Going Ape series or Fossil Friday. You might also notice I talk in a million different accents. Why? 
It was time for the backstory. Will someone help me with the- Before I became a scientist, I was an actor. Guess how I got my SAG card. I played a dancing chicken McNugget in a McDonald's commercial. I fell for the stunt nugget. Potting was such sweet and sour sorrow. It was terrible. Went on to play career-changing roles like pregnant prisoner with black eye. Yes, I'm what sitting on the best. toilet. Not even my shittiest role. You might have caught me as a drunk groupie in my brawn panties on My Name is Earl. Earl and Ralph's mom made out on top of my passed out body. At age 25, I got hit by this truck. Good news! I survived. The truck didn't. If you want to know more about this totally freak accident, you can check out my Story Collider podcast. But! But! Getting hit by that truck was the catalyst to go back to school to become a monkey-chasing anthropologist. Or primatologist. Got my bachelor's degree from CSUN. I also went back for grad school, where I got to move to Panama and chase monkeys whilst riding a horse. Mine like to fart a lot. I got to do a survey of a critically endangered subspecies of spider monkey. Important side note, never touch a wild monkey like this. Teen Floss was a former pet that we were trying to get into a sanctuary. And that smile is pure fear. Because this is the next picture. She jumped on me. And while finishing grad school, I decided to combine my two favorite things. Science and comedy. I started making videos in my garage, including the titillating, the story of boobs, the breast tale ever told. That landed me on the Today Show. Talking tatas with Ann Curry. And I accidentally admitted I watched Skinamax as a child. Sorry, Mom. And a couple days later, Stephen Colbert made fun of our boob segment. Called for Butt Week. You can bet your sweet peachy keister I did a rebuttal. And Butt Week was born. For more butt stuff, you can check out my Ologies podcast. After boobs and butts, I covered balls and bacula. Or the penis bone. Then I hosted this Bigfoot TV show. Then I moved to New York City. To be a comedy writer and correspondent on Neil deGrasse Tyson's Star Talk. Then I got to talk some monkey morality with Bill Nye. So there's a little backstory. Thank Thank you so much for your support, and please stick around for more appealing adventures. Ah! <laughs> okay, seriously, do people go bananas for you? Ah! <laughs> well, sometimes. Usually it's because I'm wearing a banana suit. Yeah, you, um, do, you do wear a banana suit. Why? What happened? How did you start going bananas? I, you know, I, as a primatologist, you really have to appeal to your monkeys you know what i mean and so for me part of that was uh you know slipping into something more comfortable and putting on a banana suit but yeah uh wow. i know it's ter i wore it on the picket lines the past month at warner brothers every day i would go out there in my banana suit for you know the whole time and so i became the i became banana people just call me banana and that's <laughs> I'm not kidding. You have no more my... name. You're just banana now. Where that is all. My... my banana costume's on my couch, but I got a lot of people to sign it when the strike ended. To uh, yeah, like Jerry Ryan, who came out every day. I had her sign oh, it. Oh, yeah. Jerry's so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a big like for uh, you know, part of the acting community. She's a big, not a science communicator herself, but a huge proponent of science communication and the things people do. Um, but how, how are you feeling? Like this is not science or comedy related at all, but like the act, the, the writer strike, the actor strike, all this stuff. Like, are you just relieved it's over? Are you happy with the results? TBD with the writers? Yes. <laughs> but with, uh, the actors. Yeah. So I, I joined SAG 26 years ago yeah. and it had, you know, I've watched my union when I, when I joined my union, when I was 18 years old, I only had to make $7,500 a year to qualify for health insurance. You got a card in the mail, didn't have to pay a premium. You had health insurance. Now you have to make $27,000 of SAG money yeah. a year to, to qualify. To even qualify. And yeah. then you have to pay a premium. So I haven't had SAG insurance for many, many, <laughs> many years, right? Yeah. So, I, and I also, that's a whole system, like uh, United States systematic problem because right. we, our health insurance should not be tied to our employer because that doesn't incentivize them giving us hours or that money. But mm -hmm. um, right now, the AI stuff, it, you know, they're not releasing the full deal. So it's a little frustrating because we can't we, we're we're just been given a summary. Huh. And um, so and you this don't is know the actual wording related to the AI rights, which was just, basically like they could take your body, your face, your voice and use it however they want. Well, the new the new deal, the summary yeah. says we have to give consent, but they also can okay. turn us down if we say we don't want to give consent. So how is that consent? That's not consent. That's coercion, basically. That's it basically, is. yeah. It's it's not. That's not how that works. So I want to know more. I and I don't know about you, but I, I 
I have been what is considered FICOR for 10 years because science communication, and this is another problem with our field, mm -hmm. is there's not no, union. There's no union. Yeah. And I, I actually, mm -hmm. I would love, I would love to do a video showing what I get paid for all the jobs I've done. Seriously. Because I want yeah. people to know how little <laughs> science, I mean, not because I'm like, wah, wah, wah. it's more about people tell me they want to leave academia. And I've, I've been a professor. I mm -hmm. was a professor. I, le I left teaching because it paid so little. But I get paid just <laughs> yeah. as little to be a hey, science communicator. Go from little to little. Yeah. Ooh, that's well, a I'm a jump. comedian. Okay. So my, my, my mom always goes, do these comedy shows pay? And I'm like, mom, no, no it's comedy. No. But so I went <laughs> it's from funny. From it's from not that I, I can't I eat. Know. Come on. Comedy's pain, mom. It's pain. Mm. It's other people's pain. But um, yeah, so what we're, I think what we're seeing now, so yeah, for science communicator, I, communi communication purposes, I am now FICOR, which means I'm still, I'm not really part of the union. I'm part of it, but mm. I don't get any of the benefits. I don't even get to vote. But I still, I'm so passionate. I was out there every day because I, I want to see change. And I also have been talking to an uh, organization called the Nonfiction Coalition about unionizing SciCom. Um, cool. So I'm hoping that we can make some strides in that because, you know, I, I think we can only benefit from that. And, you know, I, I tell other science communicators that I, I've turned down work because it didn't pay. And I've had science communicators come to me and say, oh, can I grab that work? I would like to do it for free. And I said, you can do don't, that. Don't do however, it for free. However, however, you need you to are, ask to be paid. You need to get paid because you you screw all of us over. You screw yourself mm -hmm. over because you're saying I am worth nothing. But you're yeah. also screwing all of us over because it tells these this and it was basically it the was my industry, own boss. It, tells, it tells the industry that all together we're worth yeah. nothing. We're worth yeah. nothing. And it was yeah. a, it was a organization or a company that I'd work for that is very high profile that did have money, right? So mm -hmm. this is where we have to fight. But um, that's my soapbox. I do think we're we're this is a labor revolution. Mm -hmm. I uh, you, you had UPS who had made big gains this year with their um, contract. Uh, WGA hospitality workers were on the line. Starbucks mm -hmm. workers. I just found out that WGA strike captains went out with with Starbucks uh, workers to strike this morning. Oh, wow. uh, you have uh, CSU, where I used to teach. They are threatening on going on strike right now. Yeah, there's uh, grad and, students and others who like lecturers who also are also looking at striking. Just yeah, throughout throughout science, throughout entertainment, across the spaces, I, yeah. we're done. We're done. We're done. And I had an argument with a relative who. She, she's not a blood relative, but she makes a lot of, she's, she's rich. She comes from money. She's a, she's a relative by marriage. And I remember telling her that I made about $550 a week teaching basically three classes a week at a university where I taught in person for your university. And her response wasn't the system needs to change. This is unfair. Her response was you should live with more roommates. You don't have to live alone. And I was like, I'm a 44 year old. It's your, it's your fault. It's your yeah, fault, Natalia. It's, fault. it's like, your fault you wanted to educate people. <laughs> right? I'm a 44-year-old woman with a master's degree teaching at a four-year university where students are paying X amount. That, that, and we know that tuition is constantly being raised, but what isn't being Always. raised yeah. is Our the wages. salary. Yeah. And a bulk of the teaching is now done by adjunct lecturers, which is basically slave labor. It's, it's, it's next to nothing. It's indentured servitude. So I'm seeing a revolution, and I'm excited to see it. I think I think the information economy, you know, has been uh, uh, devaluing information. Right? It's been take everybody can get information. The internet is full of information. Yeah. You all can have information at your fingertips <laughs> whenever you want to go. You go, ah, oh, information, information, information. But yeah. when do you have a person who is educated and wise in the ways of the area you want to study, who can give you direction, who can help to give you a curated version of the, the science to help you find a path among all the studies, among all the data sets, among all the things? I mean, if yes, everybody can look at all the different data sets and yes, do your own research, hashtag. But expertise is valuable. There is time and there is effort and there is so much in what we know that yeah. uh, I, I'm really, yeah. I think there is, I think you're right. There is a revolution in the making in terms of what we know. Yeah, we are. yeah. absolutely. I think I, I, I even just found out that my mail carrier let me know that uh, postal workers have been working without a contract for months. 
Did we learn nothing from the 1980s? Going postal did not have. That's not a euphemism. It that came is about from somewhere. Yeah, like I mean, I, I'm just. And do you know how many postal workers? I just did a stand-up bit about this. There are 630,000 postal workers. We have 630,000 disgruntled postal workers in the United States. Like what? What are we doing? You know. So again, like across the board. The, the 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 disparity of the haves and the have nots is is growing and it needs to it will sort itself out but again uh, it's just in the meantime a lot of us are suffering yeah i mean have a lo- another latte just you know you yeah know, get a roommate to make up for it or you know whatever it's okay <laughs> just stop <laughs> having so much avocado toast if you would I just know. stop you could afford this mansion. I mean, you don't have to use avocados. I mean, you can just pretend that that grass on the lawn, you mush it up a little bit and you spread that as delicious paste all over your toast. It's, you know, it's got fiber. Chlorophyll. <laughs> Chlorophyll, you write up. Oh, Jesus. Sweet okay, purple tell Jesus. me a bit about Christ some really yeah. awesome things you've been doing recently. Ah! What kind of science are you interested in? What do you like yeah. these days? So, uh, God, lately, this past year, I, I started podcasting for Scientific American. So I, I had Ooh, a podcast cool. that, yeah, that came out in September about a lesbian monkey love triangle. Yes. At an uh, animal sanctuary that I volunteer at called Animal Tracks. You should look them up online. They're wonderful. They're in Agua Dulce, California. But it's three monkeys, two species, one hell of a love story. It's a white-faced capuchin and two brown capuchins that have a torrid love affair. The white-faced capuchin has just reached puberty, and she is just a hot and bothered monkey. And so she goes back and forth pleasuring. So it's Bailey, Macy, and Haley. Hey, Bay, May. And Bailey goes back and forth pleasuring Macy and and, and Haley. Oh, my. And, but their power dynamic is really interesting because Bailey is, um, uh, you know, she's the white faced capuchin. She's younger. Haley is the lowest of the monkeys on the, on the ladder of monkeys. And so when she's pleasuring Haley, she is essentially, um, uh, kind of dominating her. Right. But when she's Mm. pleasuring me, uh, that's boo on the far right. That's he's not involved. He's actually been fixed. Poor boy. But um, when she's pleasuring Macy, it's about uh, serving the dominant one. So it's a, it's her way of buttering right. one's biscuits. So it's like if I butter your biscuits, you might drive the getaway car when we rob the banana stand again. And so it's like a way to, you know, again, there's a, um, a transactional thing with sex in humans whether we like it or not, and primates. But as I was writing this, yeah, as I was writing this, another study came out of Cayo Santiago of uh, macaques, back to macaque attack. Uh, Macaques that they were studying, they found that there could be an evolutionary benefit to uh, homosexual behavior in a group of males. They found uh, 76% of these, I think it was 273 males, 76% of them were mounting other males. And uh, only, I think, 25% were mounting females. And they found that the males that were engaging in homosexual behavior had slightly, slightly more offspring than those that didn't. So perhaps Hmm. by buttering the biscuits of the males that are dominant, they will have more access to the ladies that they want and perhaps father more for uh, offspring. So again, I'm very big on looking at, um, you know, queer primates and uh, or queer animals in general and looking at homosexuality and just the fluidity of sexuality because we don't look at we don't look at monkeys we don't label them straight or gay we, we generally pansexual would be the term uh, very a lot of fluidity uh, but I think we can see that across humans yeah it's just a monkey and, there right it's like it's why are we labeling yeah. it any particular way aside from anthropomorphizing based on the particular mores that we have right now. That and I, I do think anthropomorphism is an interesting idea because I I don't know the more I think about it the more I kind of get a little perturbed by some of it only because we have to remember like for instance I you know we look at um, primate behavior and we're like wow you know like they're they're like us and we try to find ways that they're like us but it's like yeah. have we stopped and think for a second they, these species have been around for millions of years humans only 300,000 we are just like them in many Hello. ways we have yeah. like a lot of the the emotions that we feel grief jealousy uh you know understanding what's fair and not altruism we see that in a lot of animals so what's to say that 
you know, they're like us. I mean, that's pretty species centric if you ask me. I think it totally is. And I think it goes, you know, this impacts also the research questions that are being asked. Because if we're trying to just, you know, say, oh, they're like us, so we'll ask these questions, it's not actually like the the difficulty is getting researchers to just look at the animals as the animals they are and take all the bias away from it with no like yeah. judgment or, you know, what expectations. Yeah. Well, a great example is gender. Mm -hmm. This idea of gender. Gender is a constructed idea by humans. You know, yeah, yes, yeah. there's differences between the sexes, but I'm probably going to make some people piss. But we, we scientists have known for a while that sex and gender My are not the same audience. and neither. OK, good. I think I know I think, this, this ain't Joe Rogan. Um, uh, or is it? No, it's are not. You? Wait a minute. Who's under that mask? Great reveal. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Joe Rogan experiences all time. Oh. <laughs> um, no, but sex and gender are not the same and neither are binary. So, but yeah. uh, this idea though about gender and foisting these sort of gender roles on non-human primates is, is just ridiculous. Right. And cause I get asked that like, Oh, is there gender roles? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, th th there's also, you know, this idea that there, there is some sort of, you know, culture sometimes with some different primate groups. Cause a lot of, a lot of behavior or we call it culture, just behavioral uh, adaptations to the environment, because that's oftentimes what it is, if the, they're responding to what the environment is. And there's a lot of plasticity in primate yeah. behavior. Uh, we've seen primates go from having a very strict hierarchy to in one, one generation become nearly egalitarian, you know, and one of my favorite books is, is writes about that. Robert Sapolsky's A Primate's Memoir, if anybody is interested, it is the book that basically made me want to become a primatologist. And he talks a lot about how plastic we are. Yeah, I love his work in primatology and behavior and like so much of his work. I'm not sure about his recent, most recent book and and uh, free will and all determinism <sighs> and all that kind of like, okay. That bummed me out a little oh, bit. So all right, I, dude, whatever. I know. But, yeah, I, yeah. I, I need to read more because I'm like, I love him so much and so much right. what, you know, behave yeah. was really fascinating. And, mm -hmm. but yeah, that the free will stuff is, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> it's interesting, you know, when you're, you know, your uh, scientific, not idols, but uh, the, the people you look up to, <laughs> you know, yes! it's like, I remember when I was a, a PhD, and he gave a keynote speech at the annual uh, Society for Neuroscience conference, and just the excitement of getting to yeah. see him speak and like talk about the brain and hormones and behavior and all the work that he had done and it was fascinating. But this is like another step beyond it where it's like, okay, you're like Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about sea slugs. This is, you, you get out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, so, so, and I, you know, I worked with Neil, but one of the, one, of, I, I will, I will take him to task for one moment, but one time he tweeted, <laughs> And he used to run primate tweets by me. He would write, run oh, something and I'd good. be like, okay. no, no, Neil, that's wrong. <laughs> or yes, that's right. I mean, he's not a dumb man. He's no, a very smart he's, man. But he he's gets very like, smart. on but, Twitter you know, or whatever that place is now, yeah. um, he would get torn apart by the biologists every time he stepped into the biology ring. Every but time. My, fa my favorite, <laughs> favorite, favorite tweet was, if there was a species for uh for which sex w was painful it would have long since gone extinct to which the biologists immediately leapt on and were like bed bugs black widows cats <laughs> praying mantises like you know just ducks pig like there's all of them so many i mean like let's talk endometriosis real quick but like again I, actually that's something i, I won't go into but I, another thing that's really fascinating to me is also endometriosis and the lack of attention it gets yeah but that's just a, that's yeah. a thing side thing um that's a but, lady problem yeah well i well actually my new my next podcast <laughs> with scientific american is called junk science it's going to be a series oh, about good. under understudied genitalia which Fun side note, that was my nickname in seventh grade. All you have to do is add GE in front of Natalia. It's genitalia. Aaron Feinstein, brilliant and mean. Love him. Um, oh, boys. Oh, middle but school. But I, I got to interview Dr. Blair Peters, the surgeon who finally counted all the nerve fibers on the female clitoris, the human female clitoris. I inter interviewed them about two months ago, and it, or a month and a half ago, and it was uh. fascinating. And you'll appreciate this. The re Guess what? 
Well, first of all, Dr. Blair Peters is a, uh, a peripheral nerve and gender affirming uh, surgeon. That's what okay. they specialize in. And <laughs> I asked them, why did you why did you count all the nerve fibers on the, the human clitoris? And just guess. Yeah. Guess why? Because no one had done it before. It's a great, great, great guess. Uh, no, it was <laughs> to build a better penis. No, I mean, that I should have gone there first because that's super patriarchal and really the way that, yeah, a lot of the research is addressed for. Uh, but it's a good, but this shows why trans care is, it helps yeah. everybody, right? Because now yeah. we know. This is the perspective that researchers are coming from when they want to think about female reproductive health and sexual health, then it's really all about the penis. I would like you to know if you do like look up um, ancient penis totem in your Google oh, search yes, yes, for images, uh, it is just an incredible image search. It's it's great. I feel like I have that saved. Hold on. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is something everyone should do. Ancient have you ever seen penis the, totems. Have you ever seen it's the historic. Mount Vesuvius or the Pompeii dicks? Pompeii weens? I don't know what I can say here. <laughs> Pam Pompeii bal baloney ponies. They have the, they're the weens with wings. The weens with wings. Yeah. My step-grandfather is no. Italian and he had a book about it. And um, I was enamored. <laughs> you know, I got busted for writing. Uh, 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 I was a smut, smut peddler as a tween. I got busted oh for writing trashy novellas as a child based on my skin uh, Because, and sorry, mom. Your mom, your mom knew already. She, she knew. knew. Oh, wow. Totally these are knew. some, these are some, these are some good weens. There, I mean, there are, oh, yes. there, are there are weens with wings. There I are love these. Weens with the little... tails. There are weens growing out of heads. There are. With noses. Large. There are small. There are, it's very, it's fascinating. <laughs> Sorry, I <laughs> love that the... these balls are these, knee... the balls are knees. In this one, I just <laughs> want to point knees? out. Is... The balls, knees. oh wait, hold on. They're knees. They're knees. <laughs> That's what they are. <laughs> test knees. They're test knees. Um, I'm going to just, oh, wow. Some God. of these are very right impressive. This, and this is, uh, is archaeology. It's history. It's... Well, the world's oldest, uh, may I play, can I Can I say this word? Maybe the word. Mm. The world's oldest dildo is thought to be 30,000 right. years old. Okay, That's good. I just want to make sure. That's yeah, it's science. very Oh. You know, I mean, I saw it. I, I, I uh, well, because there was a study that came out last year that macaques, uh, back to macaque attack. Uh, <laughs> you can't which, get away from macaque. I can't. Macaque. I got to keep touching macaque. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to get touched back to macaque. But they found that they were masturbating with pebbles. No. And so, yes. Ow, no. Yes. Ladies. Yeah. No, no, no. The males no, were. The men. Yeah. Oh. I, I'm like, how? It, no. What? Okay. What? I don't. Yeah. Mm. Oh. But, but still. I, that's why I did that research. Uh, science. <laughs> there was, I'm not just a, this is research. A depraved it's pervert. Serious. I mean, I'm that too, but no, there was, this was for science. Um, yeah. But yeah, so with junk science, so I interviewed uh, Dr. Blair Peters, Dr. Jen Lincoln, an OBGYN, and then a urologist, uh, Dr. Oh, Ashley Winder. But I also, you'll love this. I interviewed Dr. Or she's soon to be Dr. Ashley Falwell, who mm -hmm. did the, research that discovered that snakes not only had one clitoris they have two devil's doorbells and it's right. forked the carpets the, the match snake, the drapes right the snake penis is also forked isn't it so the hemipenes the hemipenes yes double fun and everyone. she showed me tons of pictures or not pictures but actual um actual uh plasticized oh my hemipenes gosh. and I got to say, they were excellent. Just really plasticized. something. Plasticized. I don't know if they were plasticized. Maybe that's, I, did I make that word up? You know, Jazzercised. It's a real it word. But I, yes. Maybe they were just in formaldehyde, but they were just, they were gorgeous. They were mm. terrifying. I want, some of them look like earrings, you know, like the really cool, but, um, oh yeah. <laughs> I've been, I've been staring off to the side because I was trying to, uh, trying to remember, uh, a science writer friend of mine was writing an article and I don't know if she actually has published it at this date. So I'm not going to say anything, but I, uh, in your interest of this kind of topic, you should look up, uh, menotoxin. 
Menotoxin. Menotoxin. Apparently, male toxin. Yeah, sorry. no. Apparently, there was an idea that floated about for uh, a very long time that female menstrual blood or the menstrual cycle produced toxins toxic to men and those around them. And the story, like if you dig into the story, oh, it, there's, dear Lord. there's a, a scientist, a housekeeper, and the, and the rest is history. But <laughs> I can't wait. This, this is amazing. Well, I mean, yeah. seriously, I, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a deep dive. If you want to go uh, men, I don't, I don't know. And it's I, only, I, wow. it's only within like the last 10 or 15 years that researchers are really going, no, there is no such thing as menotoxin. And addressing this 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 wild tale from some male scientist's brain from so long ago, but yes, for was it David decades. Wakefield? Um, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh my no, god! Decades, wow. decades, decades of this uh, garbage. <laughs> wow. <laughs> people were just like, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, that's why that we have to put women in a room or get go go away. That's great. Do you know You're Kate Clancy? Is it Kate Clancy? Do you know Kate Clancy? She just wrote a book. You would love her. She yes, is the uh, biological anthropologist. Yes, she did the work recently looking at mm -hmm. uh, the changes to menstruation based on COVID vaccination. Or uh, yes, I got it. Yeah, okay, good. And she just we wrote a book called her. Period. Yeah. You did? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I should tell you this. I feel like your viewers have already gotten a. a a clear idea of how weird I am. Uh, I do make art with my boobs, but I have known to do this in the past and present to make art with my <clears throat> menstrual there... fluid. Really? Yeah. For years, since I was like in high school, college. Yeah. Little weirdo. Little weirdo. It's art. It's forget shark wheat. It's art wheat, <laughs> you know? Who needs to go to the art store when I have fresh supply once more. I mean look it's a miserable time why not make the best of it oh, gosh. the most of it especially when you're having to be by yourself in the woman tent oh yes my hut <laughs> your hut <laughs> it's very uncomfortable I have to go out there I get I get displaced uh I live across the street from Warner Brothers so it gets a little weird uh what is it the 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 three little Warner Brother little characters come and yeah. they're like hey hey <laughs> What you oh, doing there, that, Natalia? <laughs> Menotoxin, stay away. <laughs> Leave me be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, a. I'm real popular. Dog out. Wrote... Sleeping in the doghouse tonight. There we go. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, that's uh, that's how I I, I make a lemonade out of lemons, or artwork out of period products. Yes. I know. I'm. I've. Yeah. <laughs> Many There's menstrual store. masterpieces. Well, I'm you sure. know what? At a certain point, like I'm, I'm getting older. Like there's a point where I know that this, this is limited. See, Done. this is a this. This is, <laughs> this is the window is closing. Oh, Kiki. oh my! <laughs> Are we seriously going to come see your art show? That's the like life exposition. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> see my poop painting from the beginning to the end. <laughs> Oh my God. I don't even think I have the old ones because I, I think, you know, after five million moves, they've gone away. Um, yeah. I, I, I would uh, love to see that though. It would be so hilarious. It would be like a life in blood. <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. Actually, a woman's I'm, life, the beginning and end. I may have an Instagram page <laughs> and it may be called my period pieces. Um, sure. It may be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably, possibly. Mm. And my name might be Hemoglobin. Perhaps. Heme for short. <laughs> and it just oh. got real. Yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm spitzing over here because I don't generally. <laughs> like, I admit no, it. <laughs> I know. I told my dad recently and he was like, what's art if Why? you share it? <laughs> no. Well, do you want to see one? I bet I could. <laughs> I have a, I, I did one of a cheetah. No. Oh my gosh. I love this. I it's so stupid. <laughs> I know. It's really ridiculous. But um it's you know it's art. It's a thing. <laughs> I like how you are expressing yourself. 
I do what I can. Whatever Ooh. works. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like you have a follower on Twitter now. Oh, oh no. Already followed Hello. on Twitter. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Out I hope there? I haven't totally uh, uh, dis disturbed anybody. Uh, but yeah, I, I uh, you know, again, like I feel like if you can kind of combine science and comedy and still, you know, find other hobbies that are that are entertaining, you know, I like what is well, life yeah. except like, seriously, if you're not finding a way to entertain yourself throughout it, are you are you enjoying your process? We 3D is... print skulls. Ooh. Too. That's another little side fun hobby. Love that. You know? Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. So scientifically accurate reconstructions of the soul, the skulls that are. Yeah, it's a scan. Printed. So they do a, a, a actual scan and then you can print it. It took four days to make that one because oh they gosh. just take forever. Yeah. Is no. it um, so is it uh, resin printing or is it uh, it's it's using? PLA. So uh, oh, yeah. I ha we have a resin printer, but you can't run that in the house. It has to be the garage. It's it, it's toxic. It's it's stinky. Yes, I'll get real high. <laughs> not the kind of, you know, not the high not the you fun want. fun kind. No. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia goes too high. Yeah, I'll lose a few too many blood cells or brain cells, um, which I've already probably lost um, just in life in general. But yeah, no, it's it's the filament. It's the PLA filament, filament yeah. which is actually made from, from corn, essentially. So yeah. it's, it's really and it, cool. You can yeah. get that recycled. Also. It, they have recycled sourced yeah. PLA and yeah. Yeah, I love that um, gold color for. What, I know what species it's, is that? For Anthropus Boise, I'm my favorite. It's OH5, found by Mary Leakey. Awesome, I love him. His nickname was Zinjanthropus, and then they later gave him, or well, his name was Zinjanthropus, and then they renamed it Paranthropus Boise as the genus and species. But yeah, and he has ridiculously large molars. Oh, there we go. He's, he's um, so shiny. He's gorgeous. He's beautiful. Yeah. How many skulls have you printed? What do you? How many do you we have? We have one, two. We have two Tong Childs because we were trying to get it dialed in. So we have maybe four. Wait, this is another one. This is for anthrop. I'm sorry. You're I was like, doing. Here's another one. This one's black. Oh, that's great. That's a dark. Is that a dark black <laughs> color? Yeah. So this is black skull. That's actually its name because when they discovered it, it was it was uh, encased in a lot of magnesium. So the skull itself mm -hmm. was really dark. It was discovered by Alan Walker and Richard Leakey of the Leakey fame his mom discovered this so two paranthropus uh individuals were discovered by leaky people and uh discovered in 1985 but yeah they have these huge sagittal crests you can kind of see right here it looks like a conquistador helmet yeah and that is because they had big chompers big old molars so there I were can't. large muscles that had to come up and attach to the top of the skull to be able to <clears throat> have the bite strength yeah. Even though we've determined through rigorous research that humans and our amazing jaw is here so that we can punch each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And we yeah. have a, we, we also, none of them had a chin. You know, right. I always, yeah, keep your chin up because you have one. Most, we have you know, one. We have none, a chin. none of them others. Our yeah. primate, our primate brethren, they're like, what chin? I don't have a chin. Chinless. Chin, chinless non-human <laughs> primates. <gasps> Aww. Aww. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you have some more uh, like sciencey stories sure. that you've been covering lately, or do you want? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So I was. I did two episodes recently on the History Channel, and um, cool. we covered some. One of them is a, a, a just a constantly developing story. Now I don't know about you, but I am one hundred percent team Orca. We talked a little bit about this labor revolution, yeah. and I believe that these sassy sassy citations take the term "eat the rich" quite literally, as they have been attacking and ramming rudders of sailboats uh, since 2020. There's been over 500 attacks attacks on these uh, different yachts. Uh, four boats at this point have been sunk by these yeah. orcas. And uh, they're trying to figure out, trying to get to the, the root of why this is all happening. And it, and it seems they found a fi found the original orca that has been orchestrating these attacks <laughs> of these, these games of Yahtzee. I know it's terrible. There's too many puns. I just need to stop. <laughs> but there are these three, three orcas that have seemed to be associated with a lot of these attacks. And the main uh, ringleader is a 
orca, a mature female named white Gladys. And then there's gray and black Gladys, which are two juvenile males. And they think uh, the timing makes sense that white Gladys may have been pregnant when these started, these attacks started to happen. And she shows a lot of signs of scars, uh, just different, you know, cuts and, 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 uh, you know, like markings on her body as if she had either been uh, hit by a hit propeller, by a propeller, yep. One yep. too many times or caught in a net. And so one of the theories is that, you know, because what is what's happening is she is attacking these rudders. And it's the, the crazy cool thing is they know they know that a rudder, if you disable a rudder, the boat's SOL. Done. It's going, it's, it's not done. going anywhere. You're screwed. Yeah. No, not going anywhere. And you could and potentially going over. Sink right? it. You can, yeah. you could pop, you know, possibly breach the hole. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, they're very, they're going for the soft, vulnerable underbelly. And mm -hmm. what's happening is she's doing this. And the other two males are, have learned and are following suit and doing it with her. And not only that, but she's transmitting this behavior or it's being learned or imitated, whatever you want to call it, by other orca groups. And so we're seeing this behavior grow uh, in this area, which, oh, by the way, this is off the coast of the Iberian Peninsula in a very populated area where a lot of boats have to go through called uh, Orca Alley. It's been called that. Um, and basically what's happening is they're attacking these rudders, disabling boats, and it's either thought that it's retaliation. Like she's retaliation. actually Retaliation? Yeah, that's retaliation. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish White Gladys knew who I was. I love her so much. In this oh game my, of revenge. This, <laughs> she's such a beauty. She's such a, oh, what a darling girl. But she, she's attacking these boats. It's not sure if it's retaliation uh, or it's play because orcas like to play. You can see them, you know, and they also will imitate and they have different fads. Like in mm -hmm. summer of 86, they were taking, they took to wearing salmon on their head like hats. So no just, just because. weirdos. Just, I love them. Yeah. Just so, yeah. Salmon hat. Do you have a salmon hat? No. I just don't. for the yeah. halibut, you know, that's, that's why we do it. <laughs> you knew it was coming. You felt it. it. You felt it. But yeah, these sassy cetaceans, I mean, yeah. And if it's not enough that they can ram the rudders and disable the boats, they also have a, an eight foot long prehensile baloney pony uh, that they could, you know. What if they put that to work? They could slay <sighs> the whole new meaning to cold cocking. That's all I can say. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's terrible. It's terrible jokes here. But yeah, so this is a, and mo <laughs> the reason why I brought this up is because there actually was, well, one, they shot, they sunk a boat called Champagne, which made me laugh my butt off because I was like, that wow. That cork was popped in that. that yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there, <laughs> the boat was not left bobbing like a cork in the water. <laughs> it, yeah, there we go. Oh my god. Oh, um, that's a, that's my case of bubbly. But yeah, it was bad, and they're just eating the rich, like straight up. You know what I mean? Like eating the rich. Just don't even care. They're just like, ah, we got this. I I think the actors need to team up with the orcas. I think Ooh, the, the postal get the, workers. Yes, Woo! orcas and unions. There we go. <laughs> Oh my God. Contract problems. Yeah. Solved. This is, yeah. This is a great <laughs> idea. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, so it, they also just sunk a, a Polish ship uh, last week. Yeah. Cause I did this, I did this show last Tuesday and it was a few days before, yeah, a few days before that they, they sunk their fourth ship and it was, and they, they, they attack for like an hour. There's been a couple accounts of like how terrifying it is. And, and you can mm -hmm. imagine if you're on a sailboat, which I actually, Ugh, I lived on a sailboat off in uh, in San Francisco for like a year, which it sounds a lot sexier than it was. It was miserable. Yeah, but um, cold in San Francisco for the sailboat life. Yeah. Cold and small, like you're just like you know you're, you're sardines in a can. And um, <laughs> you think I would be terrified. in Portland. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's I don't know. It's a fascinating story. More to, more to come. Uh, but it's it's left a lot of people just sort of terrified to sail yeah. their sailboats to yeah, the Iberian I have, Peninsula. I have, I have a friend actually who put life savings into a boat and went sailing and had to leave harbor through Orca Alley. And there were reports of orca sightings, but their mo their boat made it through. But like a couple of boats behind them was it was attacked. And so, like, they just narrowly missed being attacked by orcas. And, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. Wow. So they, they were very, yeah, there was definite yeah. anxiety about that going on. Yeah. Cause they've sunk. So they've sunk four so far. Um, it looks, yeah. The last, the, the Polish one was number four. Cause that's They're the thing. Get better at sinking the boats. They're going to learn yeah. uh, the, the techniques a little bit better. But I think this is fascinating because we've, we've talked about this story on the show before, but they hadn't gotten as far as tracing it back to the white like, Gladys, you know, yeah, white white Gladys. Well, I mean, that's, this is seriously like, is this an HBO special? So good, yeah. And and they think, <laughs> okay, so she was pregnant when this started. So you know, they're very protective of their calves. This is how crazy she is about ramming rudders. She's really into it. She will leave her calf to ram a rudder, which is not generally, you know, that's what scientists were kind of like, whoa, poor parenting. She, you know. <laughs> It's a little risky. Maybe She's there's a little, a little PTSD, orca PTSD there, maybe? like Yes. I mean, oh. honestly, this is a podcast I want to listen to. I know. Get it? Because they're in a pod. The pod. The orca oh pods. And, yes. Don't listen. Just, just don't. <laughs> just don't. Just don't. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. But the, seriously, I want to know what's going on. I want to know. I want to get to the bottom of. So that's that's one thing. And then we also were talking about uh, permafrost. And this is crazy. This is, as you know, the worth. The Earth is warming. That that is ship it? has sailed. Is it? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I, I know. I've never heard of this news. Fake news. We, we just we just had dengue fever. I feel like in Pasadena, <sighs> and it just and that person hadn't been traveling. So it's like, well, okay. Oh, that doesn't mean dear. that you know somebody wasn't traveling, came back, the mosquito bit that. You know, it could have been that. Could have been. But, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, permafrost is melting. Permafrost, of course, is, you know, called permafrost because it's Earth that is permanently frozen. But nope. as climate is warm, you know, as greenhouse uh, gases are emitted in the atmosphere, Earth is warming, permafrost is melting. And when permafrost melts, guess what? All that organic matter in the permafrost is now able to decompose. And what does it do? It emits even more greenhouse gas. So it's climate change Yay. causing climate change. Yay! Yay. And then, um, I know, woo! <laughs> and so they, in the show, <laughs> like the show called Unexplained, Unexplained, and I've done several, a few episodes of the regular show, but this is Unexplained Now, which is like a shoulder content. But awesome. they um, yeah. talked about how they they were drilling in Siberia about 130 feet down, and they found nematodes, a new species of nematode, which is a roundworm, a parasitic roundworm. And it was about almost 50,000-year-old roundworm. And it came back to life. So like those brine shrimp, it's that cryptobiosis where these uh, species can actually freeze metabolic function. So basically like a brine shrimp, this nematode froze all metabolic function. It yep. came back to life and immediately started reproducing. And they're an all-female species. So they weren't banging. Ugh. This is just like – it's like a mother's job. I'm going to split. I will, I'm just yeah. going to be – my daughter. I will make yeah. my daughters, and then my I'm daughters make will make them. my daughters, and we're, yeah, we're splitting, we're budding. That's good. <laughs> but yeah, so, so immediately, right? But this is just an example of, you know, the fact that we are waking up a host of, ho you know, well, we're the host, uh, but a host of potential zombie viruses, bacteria, like, because, you know, one of the questions they asked me was like, well, what about a woolly mammoth? Could that come back to them? Well, no, we're not going to no. get a reanimated woolly mammoth, but the bacteria in that woolly mammoth's gut has already been known and seen to wake up. And some of it is even antibiotic resistant bacteria. That's wild. So they had because, well, I mean, we, we know with antibiotics, a lot of these antibiotics come from bacterial warfare, right? The bacteria yeah. fighting each other. And so we found them because we were like, look, this bacterial <laughs> toxin kills another bacteria. We'll use it. <laughs> and yeah, so you have these re-emergences of genes and mutations and traits. And yeah. Ugh. Yeah. No, it's great. I mean, the whole great. zombie virus... You know, I again, we, we talk about things like Zika or dengue or yellow fever coming further north, but we right. don't talk the, about the things that are sleeping. Yeah. Right. The emerging infectious diseases, which are the ones we're looking at right now that have been around for a while, but that are just moving with the climate changing versus the sleeping ones. But I do wonder, like so many, like we found out that uh, like herpes virus has been with us since we, you know, since we were our ancestors, you know, like speak herpes. for yourself, Kiki. 
<laughs> Herpes virus is like, I love these proto humans. We'll stick around with them. And so we have evolved with a lot of viruses, with a lot of bacteria. And so I do wonder, even though now we haven't been exposed to things, how much our immune systems still have in them from, yeah. you know, just little bits and pieces from previous infections ancestrally. How much is in our DNA still? Seriously. Maybe what we need to do yeah. is go swimming in that seawater and oh, just absorb a, <laughs> absorb a crap ton of DNA. Just rub so, it all over us. Just go swimming in the ocean. That's, oh. Yes. Absorb it. Yes. This is what we Let's, will do. What are they? Extra cell, <laughs> extracellular vesicles? Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see. It's the newest in skincare. Right. Well, there, I mean... <laughs> God, wait a minute. Remember, I'm sorry. I one of my 562 weird ass day jobs I had as a as a student was working at Barney's New York, LA, and I remember La Mer, La Mer, La Mer face lotion, which is the sea, yes, the, the sea. Were we just rubbing weird DNAs all over We're... our face? <laughs> That's right. Thank you, La Mer, La Mer. Uh -huh. Qu'est-ce que tu fais aujourd'hui? Um, <laughs> quelque oh, chose, quelque chose. <laughs> ça va, ça va bien. Je ne voyage oh, jamais ouais. sans ma vibrateur. Oh, that might have been dirty. I'm sorry. To your French. Je veux aller à la bibliothèque, bibliothèque. mes amis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Je suis le roi de fromage. Um, well, oh, I was gonna say, oh, 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 gaining uh, immunity. I was gonna say, yeah, one of the things yeah. that was really interesting is as as anatomically modern humans. So, so we were talking about being chinless at one point, and I just mm -hmm. want to point out there were two camps for a while that thought, yes, we definitely uh, had sex with Neanderthals, anatomically modern humans, because we will have sex with just about anything, right? Anything yes. with legs that walks upright, we will probably, it doesn't even have to have like that chair, I'll have sex with that chair, I'll have sex with that watermelon, whatever, we'll have, you know, you name a pie, name it. But there were a lot of people that actually, no, there, was, no. <laughs> there was a whole camp of people that were like, we would never, we would never have sex with those chinless freaks. Never. You know, we're like humans. We, yes, yes. We would never. Yeah. But they, they, ancient DNA, like hips, does not it lie. It doesn't lie. <laughs> and it told a little story. It, it, it snitched. It snitched on those Neanderthals. Mm -hmm. And it was like, yeah, we definitely boned them. And we also gained, you know, there was benefits to bo boning Neanderthals because we actually gained some of the immunity that they had uh, developed from living in a cold Europe, you know, and also some of the traits that helped them, whether it was, you know, um, you know, being stockier, having more fat reserves, a broader chest, whatever, or you know, stockier yeah. build, um, uh, you paler skin for absorbing that vitamin D or that sunlight. So you, you synthesize vitamin D. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. It's just very interesting. Like what, if we maybe have any immunity to some of these sleeping pathogens that are just waiting to Right. Yeah. You know, so there's got to be. I mean, we've been evolving. It. We talk about, you know, systems evolving together for eons. And so what is, we've been here, we've evolved with yeah. these things, even though some things might be sleeping. We also know that there are lots of little repeats and other sleeping retroviruses and other things in our DNA. Um, you know, what do we know? <laughs> I don't know anything, Kiki. I'm just here to party. I'm just here. I'm just here to rage. Rage, with rage. white, with white, gray, and black Gladys and Ram Rudders. That's what I'm here to do. <laughs> oh, Ram Rudders! That's my stage name. <laughs> <laughs> my drag name is My Cocaine. <laughs> That's my drag king name. I'm just gonna wear a little wow. pencil. You know. Thin, you know yeah. yeah, when I'm doing my drag routine, it's always going to be I'm misinformation. Ah, it's a good one. Yes, <laughs> and it's a good one. It's a very good one. Oh, if only I did drag, but I don't. I'm sure there's somebody out there who's got to be using that name. I can't believe I don't. I always have mustaches <laughs> at my disposal. <laughs> where are my Where are my mustaches? Where are no. my minions to bring me my mustaches? My boyfriend would laugh if he were here because I, I I'm not I can't even tell you how many times we find mustaches throughout the apartment where I, he'll find something on his floor and he'll pick it up and I'm like he'll be what it's is this I'm like it's a mustache. Hold on, I feel like I'm 
<laughs> because every five minutes you must ask him a question. I must ask. I must ask. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. I found this. This is weird. This is like some weird. What is that? That's fun. That's a fun costumeage. I don't think I have a mustache on my. D I cleaned it I, recently. I, it's too. really, really wonderful that this is actually distressing to you that you don't have I, a mustache. I also have a very. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you, there was a male wig on my my desk earlier. There are a lot of boob paintings because I did a live earlier and I was not with my. The, I was showing them the paintings, not my boobs. To be That's, very clear. Thank you for clarifying. Yes. Yes. There, yes, there were good. questions. I know. <laughs> I'm here to answer them, but God, no mustache. This is what I, my boyfriend's gonna laugh when I tell him there was nary a mustache on my desk. What is happening? <laughs> what world do we live in? Not one somebody, that I want to continue. Yeah. Somebody came and took all your mustaches, <laughs> cleaned them up. Honey, quick, come home. Someone has robbed us. What have they taken? My mustaches. <laughs> I cannot find one. Uh, they must have come and gone on a razor scooter. <laughs> you read my mind. You know that they probably did. Oh, this is so depressing. Oh my gosh. Oh. All right. So we've okay. got well, Neanderthals. Shoot. We've got reemerging diseases. We've got permafrost. We've got multiple clitorises on snakes and orca attacks i'm looking for a mustache okay i know you are <laughs> where did natalia go oh on the wild mustache <laughs> the wild mustache hunt <laughs> i have come up with nothing i am so sad oh, oh we didn't Reardon get in yeah. the chat says they all left as they said they must dash ah! winner 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 thank you must very much. dash that is kevin <laughs> kevin high five high five for that one. my my pug just ran over here my dog just ran over to tell kevin that she must dash but she also loved your <laughs> joke it's my, it's terrible did she bring a little basket oh. of mustaches the chances of finding the mustaches here. Oh my God! I wish. Yeah, what? Someone just. I, I, I'm really disappointed. I'm I'm half the woman I used to be without my mustache. I really? mean, the funny thing is, if you get close enough, you can see that it is coming in nice. You oh, know. God. So something not mustaches, but I found out that uh, my husband's new thing is uh, watching television programs with really attractive women with like big bushy eyebrows to uh -huh. try and figure out which of them must have a mono brow that they shave. Oh, <laughs> that they like just, ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> that is, that is good. <gasps> We're watching like an old Star Trek episode. He's like, yeah. definitely a mono brow. Mono brown. <laughs> yeah, because the old, so that's the thing. This is the deal with the old ones. Yes, but with the new ones, microblading. Right. Did yes, my. Yeah, microblading is a tough one because I've seen people with like nothing. And then like all of a sudden, bam, these like <laughs> Cara, what's her name? Cara de Levine or Vina or something that Cara de la something. eyebrow or vine She's together. She's got great brows. Great Big, brows. Like, like Brooke Shields caterpillar yes. brows, you know? It's wonderful. Raisin, chill out. We'll, we'll go out soon. <laughs> My dog, my pug, my pug's like, you're talking Please, about I eyebrows. Must go out. Are you have? <laughs> do you have to keep talking? I about must my... use the facilities. By facilities, I mean your backyard. <laughs> she, she will just, she's, she's a feisty little bear. Oh, hold on, pug. Just one moment. Oh, there uh -oh. she is. I forgot I have here headphones and folks at home, just so you know. She oh, wants to be part of a pug now. No, she's just breathing. That's her. Br that, no, people always think she's growling. That's the sound she makes. Uh oh, is Kiki going to get an animal? Because I swear to God, oh, no, I thought you were going to get it on the couch over there. But I'm just dying of laughter here. <laughs> she really so is. This this, yeah. this last weekend, I saw um, uh, Nobel Prize winning scientist uh <laughs> presented a oh, pug. 
pug presenting. Uh, and of course, I'm blanking on the name because I have the memory of a goldfish. Uh, and so, yes, Francis Arnold. And Francis oh, Arnold yeah. was fantastic. Talked about um, creating new enzymes and the uh, the uh, the technology, the chemistry technique that she pushed forward that she got the Nobel Prize for. Yeah, but her her humor was was great because she was like, "Look, biologists, you think you're awesome? You have like this much of the world to play in. You are constrained by nature. I have the whole universe." And she, so she's going on. She's like, "And also, humanity. What are we doing? We're creating these things for our own uses. I mean, why are poodles?" <laughs> <laughs> She makes a really good point. Why and the pug? The pug with the breathing. I oh, mean, th this animal will not exist started. in the wild. This is Don't like the panda of humans' genetic tinkering. She's very cute. She's very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. But that dog is dumb as a rock. She's not very bright. I love her. <laughs> I love you. I love you. But no, no. This and it's you know I, well, they're one of the oldest dog Poor breeds thing. about. 400 BC, they were bred to be like the clowns no, for the kings really? in China. Yeah, yeah. They were like, but bred to be like, you know, like the emperors in China, like to be like the oh. kind of like the little, little dopey clown dogs. And uh, she fulfills that role very well here. But she, <laughs> I would not, my boyfriend, she, he came with a pug. Um, that's why I swiped right, was because, I mean, hey, thank you. Yes, oh, yeah. you have a pug. You you she, like your pug. She was, You're good. Yes. He looked like a good dog dad. You know, that's there's something oh. very sexy about that. But yeah, they're selective breeding has been cruel. Yes, yes. And dog domestication is fascinating too. Like that's thought to so. maybe have helped us outcompete Neanderthals, right? With our dogs able to like wolves, but yeah, domesticated, be able to help us hunt, be able to you know, help take out, you know, the cats. I don't know. You know, they killed yeah. maybe a few of the mice, but, you know, dogs probably did that a little bit better even. But probably, Possibly. I don't know. I am convinced. My cat, she is like <gasps> the most wonderful, soft lap cat. She just gets in there. She's like, no, I am an anchor. I hold you to the couch now. You shall not ever rise again, and I shall be soft like a chinchilla. Oh, I want yeah. to love her in a way that's appropriate for a human to love a cat that is soft like a chinchilla. Yes. What's her yeah. name? Cappy. Oh, is she a capybara? <laughs> no. Why did she get the name Cappy? It's so cute. She, she's a tabby. She's a tabby cat. And when my child was young, I was explaining at the time we had our other cat, Stella like a star and then I was like oh well there's a scientist named Tabitha and she found this star which is doing these weird things and people want to know why the star is acting the way that it is and so she's studying it and it's called Tabby's star and I was thinking yeah. maybe we could call the cat the cat Tabby's star because she's a tabby and Kai said yes Cappy star oh and so really she's been Cappy Cappy how, then how old is she she is uh, eight years old now. I want to love her. Midlife. Midlife. I'm going to come to Portland. Portland. I will. You must. Come I to must. Portland. I shall. Please, please tell Kathy I'm coming. Kathy. I shall take the, the first the train, train at dawn. Coming. She'll be here. Oh, she glared at me just now. She doesn't care. <laughs> tell her to shove it. Bring me a fish. I want a fish. Do you want some oh, fish? Oh, Cappy. Maybe a little salmon hat. I want, oh, well, then she could be a little orc. I did. I dated a guy years ago who had a black and white cat named Shamu, and I called Shamu the orc cat because it was an orca cat. It was an orc cat, but his name was Shamu. She was a good cat. She, she, I'm just she's laughing. dead now. That poor kitty. Pretty probably yeah. good kitty while she was up. But I'm just thinking now about putting my cat into an orca costume with a salmon <gasps> hat on top of it. <laughs> Hilarious that would be. <laughs> it would be better. If and someone then how like, she would kill me in my sleep. It. Yeah. <laughs> but I would love it if you walked down the street because I this think inside that, joke. <laughs> was it Puget Sound? Was it like I feel like it was on, in the Pacific Probably. Northwest? Yeah. I feel like it was. It wasn't like Orca Alley. But mm. I would love it if you walked down the street and somebody was like, "Summer of 1986, <laughs> Orcas wearing salmon's as salmon hats, hats just for the hell of it." <laughs> like they just like they just know. 
<laughs> and probably in in yeah around seattle and in that area they yeah. probably would know mm -hmm. the locals know they pay attention yeah they know they know the orcas when they see them oh okay it's getting later i have two more stories yes do you want to run through them really fast sure I'm going to text my boyfriend real quick. I'm so, oh, <laughs> hey, okay. honey, I'm still podcasting with Kiki. Don't come in. Don't. Yeah. Please right. don't come inside the house. I okay. Well, Natalia's uh, texting. I'll let you know that if yes. you head over to twist.org, you can click on our Zazzle link to purchase some of our uh, nice merchandise for twists with our art and other things with our logo. It helps support the show. The Patreon link, if you would like to just directly support us in an ongoing fashion, $10 and more a month, and you'll get thanked by name at the end of the show. And um, additionally, for show notes and all that kind of stuff, you can go there and to, you know, get links to other things like Natalia's Instagram, maybe. But we'll have <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! Yes. Okay. So we were talking earlier about emerging infectious diseases. And so I'd like to jump really quickly into one of the interesting questions of like, when does an animal become social or not social when they're sick? So or, when I'm sick, I'm like, I'm at home and I'm going to crawl into bed and I don't want to see anybody. I don't feel very good. And bats... Bats are like, <clears throat> go away. You have a cold. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. And so the, the bats, when they're sick, they're like isolated. However, this recent study out of Virginia Tech is kind of interesting, published in the journal Ecology and Evolution. The researchers determined that uh, sick finches, like house finches, uh, that these finches that they studied, when they... Uh, <laughs> And the way the researchers <laughs> determined this is they uh, basically gave the finches eye infections. They're like, here, we will infect you and then see how you act. And then we will treat you and see how you act. So they could have the same animals in different situations, see if their behavior changed. Um, and they determined that these, these cute little house finches really like to socialize when they're not feeling well. It's unlike most other uh, stories that we've heard Aww. about sick animals, that when these finches had eye infections, other birds were not likely to notice the eye infections and so didn't shun them. Uh, like, you know, they had a scarlet letter or something like that. Uh, they just, you know, so these birds hung out near the, beard, the bird feeders and kind of hung out near the flocks. And when they were better, they became less likely to hang out by the flocks. They were more, you know, mm. kind of average, like the, the, the regular unsick bird. Um, and they determined this by basically having the birds infected or as a control in cages where they had empty cages and, and the cages full of a flock. And then they said, where do you like to sit? Are you sitting near the food? Are you sitting near the birds? Where are you going? And um, these birds who were sick were more likely to go to the flock. Oh, these Aww. flocking birds. <laughs> yes. And these flocking birds were more likely to be uh, spreading the disease, which is uh, the downside of this behavior. But the benefit of this behavior that the researchers have determined is that the flocking behavior might benefit them uh, because when they're sick, they're not able to uh, see or react to prey, I mean, to predators as easily. So the birds are, they have reduced anti-predator <laughs> behaviors and they're just taking cover <laughs> in the flock. <laughs> I just like that these 15 birds have like eight eyes between them. You know what I mean? Because like all the other eyes are infected. So they're like yeah. one giant weird, like, you see them? No, I can't see a hole. And you I stand over see. there. I can't. Oh, okay. Now I can see. <laughs> you see them? I don't see them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, you know, birds of a, fle a feather. Yeah. They flock together to hopefully not get eaten eaten by predators. God, was, were they, what, are they giving them pink eye? What's how? That's just yeah. They, they gave they pretty much gave them uh, pink eye. They gave them uh, what they a bacterial pathogen, Mycoplasma gallicepticum. Mm. Uh, yeah, and it, it pretty it. much gave the birds conjunctivitis and. Uh, this is common in these finches, but it's also treatable so that they knew they had antibiotics they, they could treat the birds with. And so the birds 
did, they were treated. So even though they were given a little eye infection for a little while, the researchers did help them become better. That is fascinating because I definitely don't want to be around anybody. Go, go away. Leave me alone. That's, you know. Ah. All right, my favorite was Tracy Ullman at the end of her old comedy show. Go home. Just go <laughs> home, everybody. Go home. Yeah. Similar, yeah. yes. Yeah. Not oh, like we my. can not like we God. can spread the olds. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just, I wonder if they were just like eating the eye crusties off of each other's eyes. I know it's gross, but I'm just like Poor wondering babies. what, what, what ew, I know. Oh. But yeah, that's, that's a rough one. I mean, it's so, it's so interesting because like, you know, primates are a highly social family of animals uh, and humans are no exception. Even super like the social, yeah. super so hyper, 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 hyper social, you know, our babies are completely altricial. Like you can't, you know, there's like gelatinous sacks of beans and sand, you know, that's what a baby is it's with, that, that makes sounds and poops and all that good stuff. Yeah, I can't wait to have one. a sack full of brine shrimp. Look at yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, that was me as a child, Kiki. <laughs> Just uh, swimming in that... <laughs> <laughs> Extracellular vesicle filled seawater. Um, oh my, my oh, oh, that that just brought the pug over. The pug's like, Did someone oh. say extracellular vesicle seawater. I'm so excited. Do you want to play? Do you, want, that, do you have a I, ball? Mama, I fetched you a mustache. <laughs> if you don't have I a mustache, been, don't I've been searching for here. hours. Hey, it's only been five minutes. Come on, lady. <laughs> Um, no reason. That's not a mustache. She she doesn't have a mustache for me. Um, um but she's pugdorable. It's okay. Sh she's repugnant. Um, so <laughs> I love you. Um, yeah. The but we're so so incredibly social. But yeah, I get when it comes to being sick. Yeah, it it, it would make sense for us to stick together. Or at least you know, take care of our. That, that's actually one of the the um kind of landmarks or you know kind of check marks of what makes a us human is taking care of yeah. our sick and, and, and injured. So, um, not necessarily, I mean, I don't know if we flock together, but we, we take care of them. <laughs> I'm, just, yeah. I'm having inside jokes in my inside jokes and I'm yeah. Keep them inside Kiki. Don't oh, say no. them outwardly. No. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I heard it and it was hilarious. Did it someone, was, wait, it hold was on. so good. Yeah. Oh man. See how I'm, hmm. I don't know. I don't know if this show has led people to drink yet, but um, the last story for the night is, you know, we like to be social, but a lot of people can have issues and uh, extreme alcohol use is a disorder that can cause brain damage and health problems. Lots of alcohol yep. kills your neurons, everybody. Mm -hmm. And so researchers have known for a very long time that there is a thinning of uh, the cortical areas so the cortex which is your like rational thought part of the brain it's like this is the part that puts all the cool ideas together i, I don't i don't have able... that no okay you should get that. one um okay. but the uh when you drink a lot uh the cortex this area that we rely on a lot for being human uh it thins thinner thinner there Researchers previously have determined that uh, if you stop drinking for a month, that your cortex starts to thicken up again. And so these researchers were like, okay, well, maybe let's look for longer than a month and see if these changes continue, see what happens. So they looked at 88 people with this alcohol use disorder. Um, they did brain scans at a week, a month, and 7.3 months of abstinence. I don't know why 7.3 and not 7.5. I haven't dug yeah. into that <laughs> specific aspect of this. Um, but they determined that uh, the, the individuals who were able to abstain from alcohol for the entire period, the majority of the cortical thickness was increased during that first month. There was a continued increase, but it was drastically reduced over the next period of time. So it really like falls in line with a lot of of talk related to changing habits and behaviors where it takes, you know, a certain number of days to get past the first impacts of the alcohol in your system and then to get past that psychological 
barrier of, or the, the psychological habit and create new habits that relate to abstinence. Um, so perhaps the structure that's being built, rebuilt there, once you've gotten past a month, that maybe that is actually tying in with, um, with, with more long-term benefits. Mm. But it's really that first month of abstinence that can help your brain recover. That's wild. Yeah. But then if you go back and you stop, you know, people go, I'm going to be sober for a month, you know, sober September, sober January, I'm a sober November, whatever it is, um, that one month of being sober can actually really, uh, does have impact Mm -hmm. on your brain. Your brain starts to repair itself. We don't know exactly what it is, but the thickness of your cortex recovers during that month. Well, that's good it's to know. Cool. It's good to that know, is neat. right? Yeah. No, I I, yeah. I didn't drink from age seventeen to twenty nine at all. Like mm. I quit drinking at seventeen because <laughs> we start early in we California. We start early. Start then early. Then I mean, I wasn't. It wasn't. And I even when I quit, it was not like I had a huge drinking problem. I just was like, this is dumb. I watched too many people around me go. Uh, you know, I watched people yeah. friends die. I watched you know family members suffer. So I was like, yeah, it's not for me. And then I started drinking at age twenty nine. And I had to learn how to drink in my 30s. And I was really bad at it. Right. Like, you know, but yeah. I wasn't how much you should drink. And uh, yeah. I black out yeah. like I straight up black out. And I, you know, and I don't it doesn't take much. You know what I mean? And so um, so I had to watch it. And I didn't really again, I, I kind of I went back and forth up and down of like, no, nah, I don't want this. This is not for me to this and that. And then finally, March of last year, I was like, yeah, I think I'm done. Like done, done. Like, I think this is nice. this is. Yeah, uh, but it it definitely, you know, all the research that I've looked at since then, and I mean, I, I've known it this whole time because I've, I worked, I actually worked at a rehab for adolescents when I was 25. Um, mm-hmm. I, wor- I was the night tech. Uh, so I had, I worked 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. with these recovering addicts and uh, children, really. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and you could, you could yeah. definitely see the changes with them from when they came in to when they know, left. a month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wonder also the period of time that you were not drinking was also uh, a big period of time that uh, when the prefrontal cortex is completing its formation and not having alcohol involved during that period of time probably was really great because alcohol has been known to uh, impact and also any substance abuse has been known to detrimentally impact the formation of the prefrontal cortex, which is also important for... uh, habit control for being able to say no for being able to make decisions yeah i mean i made terrible decisions while i was sober but i I, but but like but i mean you that's but but i was i i think i no because i i I joke about that like i made terrible decisions when i did drink and when i didn't in my 20s because my 20s and my 30s are too like my 20s are crystal clear Time. crystal clear i remember yeah. details from my 20s that people are like are you okay that is weird and then my 30s have a slight film like a haze that i'm just like <laughs> oh i don't like that and especially since i you know i'm not sure if i'll have children but if i do if i do make a small gelatinous sack of beans and sand uh baby uh i would like to be Coge like cogent and you know know what the heck's going on i, I want clarity i want I would you know you would yes. yeah I would yeah. hope so too. I mean, raisin deserves that that little frog dog that <laughs> hasn't brought me a mustache yet. <laughs> More but. mustaches for Natalia. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Um, but the the this was published in the journal Alcohol, and uh, really, my fave. My fave. <laughs> Just put it out there. It's alcohol. Uh, the researchers say the data provides clinically relevant information on the beneficial effects of sustained sobriety on human brain morphology and reinforces the adaptive effects of abstinence-based recovery. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. The there's a lot of harm reduction research now about not doing full abstinence. Because yeah, also, right. I do think harm reduction is preferred in many cases because it's hard. There's a lot of shame with, with 12 steps sometimes. Not the 12 steps is trying to shame you, but there's a lot of shame if you go out to come yeah. back. 
you know, versus harm reduction where it's a little, you know, there's a little bit more loosey goosey, you know, and it's, it's not, you're not feeling like I have to start over now and, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, what works for some people doesn't work for other people. And I'm glad that there are, you know, we don't just say one size fits all, um, you know, and if harm reduction allows people to make their way towards some kind of abstinence at some point, that's great. Or living just generally healthier lives, that's the best thing. So we yeah. want people to live and survive and have happy, fulfilling lives. And right. Yeah. yeah. Make thrive. It that's yeah. Thrive. Yeah. Thrive. Yes. Not, not just here to survive, but to thrive. I believe in this. I like this. And I hope that people enjoy coming to This Week in Science because we enjoy thriving. Lots of thriving. So much thriving. So much thriving. What are you doing this weekend? Uh, thriving. Thrive. <laughs> you're going to thrive. Wait, wait, you're going to drive somewhere? No, I'm thriving. <laughs> I'm putting this I mean, car could... into thrive. <laughs> I've got, I've got my Thrive vehicle and it's a stick shift. <laughs> <laughs> I've got five gears of Thrive. Thrive. It's going to take it to 10,000 RPM. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to okay. give you a Thrive Star Yelp review. I'm sorry. That was <laughs> stupid. I have a sip of my protein drink. Some dorky well because you're not drinking alcohol you're having a no. good protein drink that's healthy Atkins. get all your get everything you need right now all right natalia you've de decided to drink protein drink and your camera <laughs> said that's where you're gonna stay <laughs> what happened <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> seriously <laughs> of all <laughs> I was like, is her side showing I'm frozen drinking a protein drink? Because I am seeing yep. that now. Yep, that's oh where my, you are. Where? What is happening? You are stuck in the protein drink drinking I, mode. I did just take a screenshot because it's so perfect. What is happening? Come on. I am if really I, amazed that you're able to talk while you're still drinking the protein drink. Well, I've been practicing for years, Kiki. What is happening? Why? I live in Los Angeles. Okay, AT&T U-verse, get your SHIT together because this is on you. Oh, my gosh. Um, our and Laura says, toggle the camera on and off. Maybe that'll how do you, help. Oh, wait. How, okay, here. Oh. Stop cam. Stop cam. Reboot cam. Wait, it's not even letting me stop cam. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. Nope. It loves you drinking protein drink. Are you there anymore? Now she's gone altogether, everyone. What is happening? We took... It's the pug revolution. The pug needed to go outside. The pug was jealous. The pug has disabled her internet. And, um, yeah. I mean, we thought it was the mustaches. The pug took the mustaches. And that was the first sign. Yep. I know. Maybe she's restarting. I don't know. She's still, yeah, she went away. Maybe she'll come back so that we can do the end of the show. Because it's time for the end of the show right now. But I do want to be able to say thank you to her as we close out the show. I hope you've all had fun. I've laughed a lot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy laughing and enjoying what is going on. Oh, yes. Protein drink. TM. Yes. Protein drink. The drink that will freeze your camera. How do the proteins do that? We're not really sure. It's definitely not science. I don't even think she's going to come back. She's like, I got to go see my boyfriend now. <laughs> That's where I'm going. <laughs> My computer. There we go. Well, it is the end of the show, so I can definitely start the thanking of everything. Um, I do want to be able to say 
Uh, thank you to Natalia, though, so that we can finish it all out. Uh, this has just gone wild. Work has gone wild. I'm going to keep moving the question I was going to answer to the next week's show. And we're going to move and move and move. Yes. Yes, Kevin, exactly. Technology eventually will fail, regardless, at any point. R and Laura says she just heard about the reality behind the world, the world's broadcast, and how most people were actually tuned into the top radio program instead, which was a ventriloquist on the radio. Oh, I see. I see where she is now. Are you back? <laughs> Your mustache fell off. I know. I had to. I, ha I while I was rebooting, I was like, I have to grab one. <laughs> they don't stay go. on. I'm go so get a sorry. Mustache. I'm so sorry. I know. I also we're right gonna... at the end of the show. It's fine. Okay. It's okay. great. I'm. I was. I was like, well, maybe she just like left and went to go see her boyfriend. Peace. <laughs> this is how I go. I ghost at the end of the shows. You know, like whatever. <laughs> just you know, instead of the mic drop, it's the protein drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's a protein drink freeze. Oh, this was so much mind? fun. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Natalia, thank you so much for joining me. This has just been wonderful. I mean, honestly, like I feel like we could hang out and pun around all the time related to this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. It was a pun zone, man. We've been in mm. it. We've it been going fun. hard. Mm -hmm. We have been. <laughs> <laughs> hit those hit those puns oh yeah knocking them back damn there we go. oh but anyway okay before we go i do want to make sure that everyone knows where they can find you what's your you know where you are and where to look out for you these days well i'm Thanks. in my little lady hut now outside <laughs> uh because i'm not allowed in the house Nope. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I, I, uh, you can find me on Instagram and on that X thing at Natalia Thirteen Reagan. Uh, I'm on uh, TikTok at Behold Natalia. I have a bunch of comedy shows coming up in Los Angeles, so if you live in the area, uh, please check out my link tree. I've got a bunch of shows coming up and some virtual ones. And awesome. I'm actually leading a trip to Madagascar next May, and you're invited. So if you like anything that I had to say or you find that my weirdness matches yours and you want to come to Madagascar and meet some lemurs, reach out to me. We're uh, going next May. It's going to be a great time. I feel like it would be like traveling with, um, what was the name of the, the King lemur from Madagascar? You oh, 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 King jo Julian. King Julian. And you'd be yes, like, okay, yes. this is great. We go now. You go, oh, we, go we have now. a party. We have a dancing. Okay, now stop. Now it's sleeping time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that. You guys, she just described it to a T. That's what we're doing. So come. There'll and be maybe... chameleons. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. Can we... Oh, no, I was going to say there'll be chameleons there too. And, oh. you know, you invited I them? Eyes. I invited them. Yes. They okay. work for scale. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> I don't really give a flock. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an amazing, amazing adventure, and I hope that there. You are... should come. You I should would come. Like to come. It would be. You amazing. should please come. It's going Just to be fun. We go. We wear mustaches. <laughs> we dance with ring-tailed lemurs at at midnight in the moonlight. It will be so much fun. And they will tell us things about their lives. Ah <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know uh, they have stink fights. It will it will smell smell you later. Oh no. Oh yes. <sighs> on that note, I do have to give a big shout out to people who help with the show as we end it all out. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. All of you in the chat rooms. Thank you for being here, for watching the show, for adventuring with us through the last couple of hours. Those of you who are here live. You always make this journey so much better. Fada, thank you for your help with show notes and with social media. Identity4, thank you for recording the show. Gord, Arnlore, others who just there and make the chat rooms happy, nice places to be, not mean places. I really appreciate you being here. 
And Rachel, thank you for editing the show. Of course, as always, I need to thank our Patreon sponsors. So if you're ready for me to read the list, here we go. Thank you to Arthur Kepler, Craig Potts, Mary Gertz, Teresa Smith, Richard Badge, Bob Coles, Kent Northcote, Rick Loveman, George Chorus, Pierre Velazarb, John Ratnaswamy. I gotta make that go away. Carl Kornfed, Chris, Chris Wozniak, Vigard Chefstad, Donison Styles, aka Don Stylo, Ali Coffin, Reagan, Shu Brew, Sarah Forfar, Don Mundus, PIG, Stephen Alberon, Daryl Myshak, Stu Pollock, Andrew Swanson, Fred S 104, Skylake, Paul Ronovich, Kevin Reardon, Noodles, Jack, Brian Carrington, David E. Youngblood, Sean Clarence Lamb, John McKee, Rig Riley, Mark Hessenflow, Steve Leesman, aka Zima, Ken Hayes, Howard Tan, Christopher Rappin, Richard, Brendan Minish, Johnny Gridley, Jimmy Day, G, Burton, Lattimore, Flying Out, Christopher Dreyer, RDM, Greg Briggs, John Atwood, Rudy Garcia, Dave Wilkinson, Rodney Lewis, Paul Brick, Ramus, Philip Shane, Kurt Larson, Craig Landon, Sue Doster, Jason Olds, Dave Neighbor, Eric Knapp, E.O., Adam Mishkan, Kevin Parachan, Aaron Luth, and Steve DeBell, Bob Calder, Marjorie, P Paul Disney, David Summerlee, Patrick Pecoraro, and Tony Steele. Whee! Yeah! Thank you all for supporting us on Patreon. We really can't do this without you. And if anyone else out there wants to help support us on Patreon, head over to twist.org and click on that Patreon link. All right. On next week's show, oof, it's pre-Thanksgiving. We'll see what's going on there. I don't know yet. Um, but we should be back Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific time, broadcasting live from our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch channels. Also, you can find information, twist.org slash live. Um, I'm just going to keep reading this, Natalia, till we get to the end of the show, because uh, this is a lot of words. Um, sure. You want to listen to us as a podcast? Look for us wherever you find your podcast, This Week in Science. If you want more information on the show notes and links to stories, again, go to twist.org. You can also sign, up, also sign up for our newsletter that might come someday. You can also email us. <laughs> Just you use the email addresses. Kirsten at Kirsten at thisweekinscience.com. Justin at twistminion at gmail.com. Blair at blairbaz at twist.org. Make sure you put twists in the subject line so that your email does not get spam filtered into a sea-driven extracellular vesicle that's slathered all over a sea monkey and uh, takes off to Madagascar. <clears throat> we'll never get you there. <sighs> you can also ping us on the social medias. I'm usually Dr. Kiki, maybe the Dr. Kiki. Justin is at Jackson Fly, Blair is Blair's Menagerie. We love your feedback. If there's a topic or a suggestion for another interview or another guest uh, that we you want us to bring on the show, let us know. We'll be back here again next week, and we hope that you will join us again for more great science news. And uh, if you've learned anything from the show, remember... It's all in your head. And now the music. <laughs> this week in science. This week in science. This week in science. This week in science, it's the end of the world. So I'm setting up shop, got my banner unfurled. It says the scientist is in, I'm gonna sell my advice. Show them how to stop the robots with a simple device. I'll reverse global warming with a wave of my hand. And all it'll cost you is a couple of grand. Cause this week's science is coming your way. So everybody listen to what I say. I use the scientific method for all that it's worth. And I'll broadcast my opinion all over the earth. That is the end of the show, everybody. This is the after show. We don't have to do an after show. We're late. You need to go uh, see your boyfriend, take your pug out for a pee, and probably find a few mustaches. I'm getting mag dog by the dog. She's just, she's right? she climbs the. She's fine. She climbs the highest point on the couch, and then she just stares. Um, <laughs> she's dominating with those pug eyes. She's owning me. Very large pug eyes. Yeah, she got the pug eyes. <laughs> Sweet. It's not Thank catching. you so much. <laughs> huh? I said, I hope the pug eyes is not catching. No, I don't think it's contagious. Um, no. Is the show actually over or is this the, this is the after show? So it's the after show. We're still live. I haven't shut us out. So everybody's still Hi. here. Can but I, I just can say thanks? Yeah, I yes. saw some of the comments and I just want to say yeah. some of these puns are really great and I didn't get to acknowledge them. <laughs> I was like trying to be in the thing in the moment, but I was like, there was some good, good, 
S I H I T. I curse mm-hmm. more than the average bear. So, um, I just wanted to, yeah, you, you, you were like, Oh, <laughs> she's coming on. We need to prepare the pro- protein money, drink. Tree. Yeah. <laughs> Earmuffs. Just leave them on the whole episode. You never know when she's going to rip. My favorite was when my There goes one. Me, yeah. Let me say, my dad, I was working with him years ago. He, he was a production designer, and I was like his assistant's assistant. And he said, watch your blanking mouth when you, when you talk to me. But it was like, you know, he basically said the F word while he was telling me not to say. It was just, it was, like, and everybody looked at him like, well, you do you, the apple can- tree. Yeah. These you are know, great. This is why she is the way she is. <laughs> This is that's yeah the connected. You somehow. created a monster. These are really great <laughs> comments. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we've got some, we've got some great people here who come and visit every week and hang out so we can talk about science. I'm so glad they could come tonight and yeah. be here while we were all so punny. We could be so we, punny and keep it weird. Gracious. Yeah, I know. I mean, um, if we if we're normal all the time, then it's really boring. Um, you know, weirdness is the thing. It's a spark. It's a spice. It's a thing that makes life more interesting. I think so. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I I like to yeah. Be um, weird, everyone, please. Yes. Yeah, because it <laughs> keep Portland weird. your weirdness. Yes. Yeah. Embrace the strange mm-hmm. and thrive. The thrive. <laughs> If there's a takeaway from tonight, put your car in third wheel thrive. And um, is that even a thing? Is it four? No, four wheel thrive. <laughs> I don't even, I don't. If you're three wheel thriving, I mean, you're driving a spider, and that's fine. Right, it's fine. Why do spiders have three wheels? Shouldn't they have eight? <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to stop. I swear I don't drink. I just say. <laughs> You just have no filters. It's okay. No. <laughs> no, I say stupid things. I will let you go because I feel like you probably want to have some quiet moments with your with your with your people and oh my I, uh... people, hopefully my child and husband are probably upstairs playing video games. Um oh. I don't yes. They've they do the video games and enjoy that together, which is great. But Oh, that's good. Yeah. They had a a, a whole a whole boy sleepover i went to a conference this last weekend and so they had a friday night oh my son got his his best buds over and marshall single dadded the sleepover they shot each other with gel guns and played video games and had a a a, a, like scotch bonnet concentrated hot pepper eating contest and then they the boys stayed up till four in the morning and then they ate donuts the next day i mean it was it was probably like the best boy night ever. Right? That sounds yeah. like I, I'm jealous. That sounds amazing. No. Like I want to stay up to, like, come scotch over. bonnets and yes. Can I just come, come over and eat come, donuts and hug you? Come cat? over, Natalia. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> just give me 13 hours. I'm pretty no. fast. Actually, no, I'm gonna need 50. Hold on. Portland. How many walking? No. <laughs> Yeah, right. How many? Riding on the back of your pug. I could pop Raisin, saddle up. <laughs> Let's go. We ride at dawn, Raisin. Come. Come, my child. Oh, dear. She is, no, she's not a deer. She's a dog. Or at least we think she is. We say that she's a froglet all the time or a walrus. Raisin, what are you today? Are you a honey chicken? I also call her a fat weasel. Okay. I put her- yeah. <laughs> She's ignoring me now. It's fine. <laughs> She's like, I'm not a weasel. I am a pug. I am, Why do you I am, not know this by now? <laughs> mother, I am dog. I'm a doggy. Don't, <laughs> mom, I'm dog. Don't mock me. <sighs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> pug machina. <laughs> oh, God. Deus pug machina. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch that movie. I, know. I would. That would be good. That'd be absolutely spectacular. Man, it's the pug god in the machine. Mm. Just good. snorts and wheezes and grunts and farts. She. 
I picked her up today and it was the longest, most like the longest, loudest, most sustained fart I've ever heard her make today. I was today. Me, you say today. 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 <laughs> It's a pug. I mean, all bets are off. Like this, I don't, I don't, I haven't done a science experiment. I, I need to deflate more dogs. Because you know when you deflate a dog? My cat's just looking at me, judging me right now. <laughs> oh, oh my God, Cappy. I want to meet her. Hi. She's and she's soft a, like a chinchilla. She's very soft. Is she an orange tabby or is she brown no, tabby? No, she's a brown tabby. She's Aww. like, she's got, she's just the judgy faced, like, but most yeah. cuddly little thing. Yeah, she's, um, a dog, play a dog like a bagpipe, Paul. <laughs> play a dog like a bagpipe, yes. A dog like a bagpipe, yes. Yes. Wee. Reason I could, like the farts, like the, like the, <laughs> like all the sounds that come out of my dog and my boyfriend, I could play my boyfriend, like, like my, he's, the, 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 the sounds that creatures in my house make are pretty <laughs> Scottish, really. It's not, not Scottish, mature. it's crap. <laughs> get one F-bomb without punishment. No way, really? Oh, wait, are you on no. Twitch right now? Yeah, but no, that's why. It's not, no, they don't know. He's making it up. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what? <laughs> what? Is that the rule? I had no yes. idea. Oh my god! Not mature um, hot tub streams on Twitch. What? No. Oh it's my okay god. to be in your bathing suit in a hot tub as long as you don't say an f bomb. <laughs> yeah, because there's no bathing suits on Twitch, right? Or something like. There are. Yes. Oh. Oh. No, okay. it's very much a thing. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Not, cause... not on this. Not on this channel, though. No. No. I what is done the bathing? The... Yeah. No. No, no, that's okay. I feel like I feel like that's okay. What about banana suits? Oh, definitely banana suits. Okay. Those are fine. Yeah. Raisin, fetch me my banana suit. Here you are. Here's a candy. <gasps> oh my god. Oh, Cappy. She's a beauty. Yeah. What color are her eyes? Oh, they're yellow green. <gasps> oh, honey muffin. Little yeah. chicken and waffles. What is this little muffin? And she's like this. She's like the liquid cat. She just like rolls oh, out of you. Oh, your, she, she's so she's smooth and boneless. Boneless. Yes, she's I a boneless call that, cat. That's what I call raisin. <laughs> a, a, I call her a gelatinous sack of beans and sand because she has mm -hmm. no bones. This dog dead weights with the best. Like just this. It's just it's the here. Hold on, raisin. Get your little ass over here. Get your come, cat, come here. All of the boneless animals. We would like all the boneless animals. Mm. See, oh, dear, she oh, is. Hey, look raisin. at the boneless creature. Is she like, she's just leaning on your face right now. Yeah, because she has no bones. <laughs> she has no, she is, she is, this is what she does. I, she just, has, I, I can't hold on my own head. <laughs> No, she really, she don't, she won't hold up her own. Like, look at her. She, she, she oh my gosh, she's so cute. <laughs> she's like, you can't even hold on to her because she's like a uh, one of those, those she's liquid, gooey those those gooey tubes, you know, that are like yeah. you've got the gel filled plastic tubes. Remember those? We play with them and they, they yes, flip, flow yes. <laughs> She really, this is, this is what, look at this, she's a look dog. at this creature. No, she's not a dog. She is a gelatinous sack of beans and sand. And farts and smarts. Farts and, yeah, and, and not very many smarts, but look at, I mean, look at this creature. Oh my God. Look at you, little raisin. Or I dog. know. And she's also very, <laughs> she likes to steal covers and she likes to walk on people. She's wonderful. She really, she's now she is, she is literally like this in my lap. <laughs> if you could only see. I know, thank you. She I looks like a sacrificed you. lamb. Like she's just like, I don't care. I give up. <laughs> just kill me now. <sighs> Oh Amazing. my goodness. Okay. Iron Lore is going through the Twitch rules now. Okay. Oh, let's uh, see. 
prolonged and repeated use of obscenities, profanities, vulgarities as a regular part of speech. Yeah, yeah. No, we're fine there. Hmm. For sexual Cats are things, liquid. Yeah. content that focuses on sexualized physical attributes and activities, sexual topics, or experiences. And then <laughs> maybe we break the drugs intoxica intoxication or excessive tobacco use rule. Excessive tobacco glorification or promotion, any marijuana consumption use, legal drug and alcohol induced intoxication, discussions of illegal drugs. We talk about illegal drugs all the time on our show. Really? I was like, <laughs> but I'm not going to lie. Related, related I would, I was like looking at therap ketamine okay. therapy or a yeah. LSD, you know, like. When I was think, looking through interesting. my drawer. Taking all the boxes here. Yep. There we go. Mature. <laughs> Your drawer of yeah. drugs. Yeah. Well, no, I was looking for a mustache and I pulled out a big giant mushroom and I was like, I'd been looking for you. <laughs> Tonight I didn't want to say it's going to be Tonight's a great night. Fun. Well, it's I was like, do I tell fun. her? Is that appropriate? I'm just not going to say anything. Well, but, I mean, um, you found it when we were ending the show as opposed to before the show. So this could have been a very yeah, different I mean, evening. Could have. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was already kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe it would have been very normal. Maybe that would have been the... <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh, it is. This is interesting. Very normal. Very it's, normal. Okay. It's really, it's fascinating the way that a lot of these rules uh, come down because we always talk, we joke about stuff, but we always talk about things in their scientific, you know, uses or explanations or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, use hope yeah. humor as a part of it. But I don't know. I don't, I don't. I, I have us ticked as not for kids on YouTube. So yeah. you should probably check us off for, I don't know. I don't know. What's, what? Parents. It's hard. Whatever. Just figure well, out which, be, pay attention to what your kids are watching. Seriously. I think it's. Proof. Um, I, I, um, on Instagram, I, not, it's, I can't even tell you every time I post a video immediately it says it can't be monetized because I do spicier science co topics. Some of course, some are you obvious. Are, like if I'm, you are yeah. spicy in sometimes in your bikini top or. Yeah. Yeah. But like, that's, you know, I mean like how many, this is what also kills me. Mm -hmm. I did, I posted a picture of me in a bikini on my Instagram and I generally don't post a, like a flat out picture of me in a bikini, right. but it was like, it was a vulnerability moment of like me saying I deal with body Images. I think I remember your... when you posted that a while back. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. great. I lost about 200 followers in one day. Really? Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then a, another like 150 or something. And it's like science communicating males can, you know, God bless them, will, you know, with great abs, will show all sorts of, you know, ab shots. And it's just like swoon, hey. swoon, swoon. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, male science communicator, no shirt, totally fine. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, again, and I, I try to walk that line, but it's, it's, it is uh, a double standard that's frustrating because it's like, we can't, we're not allowed to be human. We have to fit into whatever box. But I, th I think that comes along with having, you know, public personas, yep. you know, at a certain point, it, you are, you are not yourself too, yeah. for, you know, and, and when you do encroach on, you know, stepping out of that narrowly defined box and suddenly you know you're you're challenging people's um, assumptions of you and how and that affects how they think of themselves yeah uh, maybe yeah. yeah that's a good way to look at it yeah yeah and suddenly it's like no wait you're in a bathing suit and you're talking about uh, important mental health issues <laughs> or what <laughs> ah! Ah! yeah yeah so is it, it, it come on it, go back to the funny voices and just being silly and talking about primate parts come on right <laughs> yeah yeah and forget it if i get political forget it like that's another well because i having hosted a bigfoot show there's a lot of uh there are a lot of politics in bigfoot circles there's a lot of i dare i say uh <laughs> blue collar folks and a bigfoot that but not there's nothing wrong with blue collars and a lot of blue collar folks i technically come from blue collar folks that are very yeah. liberal but very conservative yeah. folks and in the bigfoot community so they if i you know if i challenge rail against those conservative Trump, yeah, yeah ideals yeah. yes yeah so eh, you know whatever it's uh, I mean, 
I believe in Bigfoot. Maybe I can He believe believes in, in you. Yeah. I can believe in Trump being president again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Right, they're just about as uh, yeah, close to each other. Probability, yeah, yeah. I know, dearly. I yeah. mean, come on, Natalia. I mean, seriously, you know, you've you've met Bigfoot, right? And you're still keeping Bigfoot a secret. You're helping. You're part of the conspiracy, not to let us know where Bigfoot lives. You I got mean, me. You got me. I know it. I knew it. <laughs> I actually wrote a pilot based on that show called Diddly Squatch. <laughs> about that idea that that the lead character in the show does find him and she hides it because she knows that if she discovers him if her show goes away and her her fame will go away um or, or change and then you know and then they be it becomes this weird buddy comedy um yeah i pitched it to adult swim years ago um and uh, fuzzy door and I, i'm actually just my friend who wrote American Dad. He created American Dad. Just gave me a bunch of notes for it. So I'm going to re work it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to redo it and, and try to get it out there because I, I think it it's still has a legs. Idea. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We'll see. And if you, I mean, if you were to get, you know, the, yeah, that could be great with the right writers and like putting mm -hmm. it like, oh my gosh, it could situational comedy at its best. Right. Exactly. Douglas Fur and his crew. Yes. Of cryptids. Yeah. Very silly. <laughs> you writing something that's silly? Uh, no. no. Guilty. No. Guilty. <laughs> what do you got going on? Anything exciting coming up? Um, For myself, um, I'm still doing twists. And then I'm really working on the Association of Science Communicators and trying to help create uh, more of a professional pipeline for science communication. So your whole co your whole comment yes. earlier about talking with the group about, um, you know, possibly, you know, the unionization, um, you know, I mean, this is an interesting conversation for yeah. the professional SCICOM field. Like, I don't know, we, sh we need to talk more about this. We should absolutely No, I really, mm -hmm. it's been a very big point of frustration. As you know, we've talked, I've, I've, yeah. we've had some We've had some behind the scenes chats about how it's it's <laughs> how it's things been work. hard. Yeah, how, <laughs> how things the bacon work is or, made. <laughs> yeah, making that sausage. Um it sucks, man. Like I and I it's not yeah. It has not been an easy year, I think, for a lot of folks, but you know, I just and I think a lot of people think it's easy. Like I've got a lot of people being like, I'm gonna leave academia and I'm gonna do science communication because it looks easy. And it's like, well, it's first of all, it's not really? I mean I mean, it's, I find it easy because I've also been doing, performing since I was a child and like acting professionally for 26 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this is not, I didn't fall off a turnip truck, you know, so. <laughs> Just, you know. I'm the psychom turnip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, no. Um, this is a career and you've been working on it for years now. And that's, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's why it's hard when it's like people are, think it's just. You just wake up one day and I'm going to talk some science and it, yeah, to an extent, but you know, and you know, you've been doing this forever. So it's yeah. like, not forever. That makes you sound like you're the ancient one, you know, but like, oh, but I am, but we, yeah, we, we're, we're both, we've been, we've been in the game for a while. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, with what I'm doing, I think the goal is to, turn it, make it understood that it's, it's more than doing a couple of funny tweets or a, a tweet thread. And that's not all SciComm is. And that yeah. there, you know, as a, as a calling, as a profession, that there are many ways to do it. There are, you know, you know, there's science comedy, there's, you know, illustration, there's, you know, all sorts of things. And there's collaborations between all these things. Um, but there are evidence backed ways to help people understand things and to, you know, break through some of the social barriers and identity barriers that are out there. Um, yeah, you know, I am. Um, there's years more ago, learning. Yeah. There's more learning that people can do. <laughs> Seriously. I um I didn't mention it because I don't want to I, it, it hasn't come out yet, but I, uh, I developed a show in like 2015. It was after the shooting into in, in South Carolina of Dylan Roof and 
in that South Carolina church and it just broke my heart and Ugh. it was, you know, yeah. white supremacist um, piece of, we won't go into it, but anyways, yeah. uh, I was just heartbroken and I thought, dear God, if people just like knew early on, as soon as possible, that race is, you know, it's a social construct, there's no biological basis to it, maybe it'll, you know, it was a very naive thought that yeah. like, I can teach people and they won't be racist. But, you know, it was coming from a good place of <laughs> right. if people understood that this there's no biological basis to racial cla racial classification, maybe this would change hearts and minds. Um, and I, I've realized since then that there's so much more to it. But the idea yeah. of the show is called Science for Social Change is how mm. science can teach people and hopefully promote positive social change. And so I, I was developing I developed it and I was going to do it at at, at discovery in 2015, but they were like, they wanted me to just talk for 50 minutes about it. And I was like, no, I want to interview people. They're like, Oh no, we don't want, we don't want to do that. And so I ended up just not doing it with them. And I did it as a live stage show in 2018 with Augustine Fuentes, uh, Tina Lasisi, Dr. Uh, or, um, uh, shame, uh, Akil McLean. And then, uh, my friend Malcolm Barrett, who's, uh, was in timeless, Better Off Ted. He played the scientist in Better Off Ted, Lem. Awesome. Yeah. And he was in it and he he rapped as well. And we we co-hosted it together. We've known each other since 2008. And I wanted to continue it on, but it was just it 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 was too much work and and not enough. I, you know, I it was killing me to do it. So I was like, I financially I wasn't making any <laughs> yeah. money. And I was like, yeah, how do this I isn't do this? Paying the bills. Yeah. 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 So I but I finally I, I got funding from the American Association of Biological Anthropologists. And I recorded oh, wow. 18 or 18 interviews in three days at our conference uh, in 2022. And they've been, I've been sitting on them because during that conference, my dad's partner died. Um, mm. I was going through some other like really intense things. So by the time I came back, I was like, I had to shelve it. And so I'm finally yeah. now releasing them. And so in the next oh, week or great. so, they're going to be coming out. Yeah. And it's they're awesome. They're all these interviews um, with these amazing biological anthropologists. But I have all these other scientists that I have these interviews already kind of baked and canned and piled. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very excited and it's just looking at how science can, you know, bring about hopefully positive social change and how what people's li it. what lived experiences, how it influences science. Cause it's always good. Science is always going to be biased. It's never going to be purely objective because we're people. We're humans, know? right? We try with the scientific method, but at the same time that there's only so far we can go because we're humans asking questions and, you know, that's yeah. Gonna start it from there, but yeah, you have to send me the links to those when you start yes. releasing I'd love them. To I want to. I'd love to have share, you share, on. share, 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 share. Yeah. I want to. But I want to have you, you on. Throw those things out. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm gonna ask your advice because I'm actually gonna try to. I'm trying to. I have a Patreon, but it's not. You know. I don't, I'm bad at that kind of stuff. And I'm just trying to figure out, well, no, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm like, hard. It's yeah. Yeah. Just to organize things and stay on top of stuff me. when, when you're yeah. like, and I just want to do the content and make the, do the communicating, but then suddenly you're like having to manage a thing and, and the marketing yeah. and this and uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. So the razzle dazzle. Hey, with some modern female, we just have to know how to juggle all the balls, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you said it. I know. You said it. Not me. For once. Oh my That's goodness. Fine. Yeah. I am that person who, seriously, if you were just like, let's just sit and have a conversation, I am that person who is just going to naively say things only to realize what I have said after the words are out of my mouth so often. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best things I've ever said in my whole entire life, Kiki, like, have you ever said something and you're like that, like you, you peak, you're like, that is, That's so it. I'm eight, I'm 18 years old. <laughs> this is kind of a gross story, but I'm taking up, I'm making a poop. I am pooping at my best friend's house and my friend is trying to rush me. She's like, come on, <laughs> hurry up. And I said, without an ounce of, you know, like trying to be funny, like just complete sincerity. I just said. Hold on. I'm really anal about wiping. <laughs> and I think I just peaked in that moment, you know, like at 18. It was just That's like it. everything is just downhill. <laughs> downhill. The jokes are never going to get better, folks. No. And I, I mean, you can stick around, time. but no. <laughs> Oh, I did tell my students we were I was I was I was lecturing about the uh the vaginal microbiome 
in one lecture and I, and I, I was finishing up the le lecture and I, and I ended it and I said, just want to give you guys a heads up. Next time we're talking about the penis microbiome. Head, heads up. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. <sighs> Terrible. And then they oh. laughed and they all yeah. said, yes. <laughs> By the way, Arnold, uh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Lore. Oh my God. Is it Aaron Lore? Thank you for sharing my Patreon page. That was very nice yes. of you. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I, I have, share. It's, it's good to it's, share the links. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's a, it's a work in progress. I post a, a fair amount, but yeah, I'm excited about the podcast because I think it's going to be, you know, ro a rollicking good time. You know, we like those. Yes. Yeah. Especially yeah. if they're rollicking. That is one. Yes. <laughs> Riveting, rollicking. What's that? Raucous. raucous. This raucous rob of a film. Oh, oh, I've so switched. Funny. I've switched to my it's other poison. Frivolous. <laughs> it's yellow. It is looking poisony. It's like. It's. This is Gatorade Zero, cucumber it's, lime. It's Brando. <laughs> Rondo. Electrolytes. Yeah. <laughs> Rondo. Oh my God. Oh, that movie. It's Harry got Cruz. protein. It's got it's electrolytes. Got it's what <laughs> plants crave. <laughs> it is Tate. This is my boyfriend yells at me and he tells me, You need to drink water. And I'm like, This, this is, is water. <laughs> it's just green. It tasted like tastes like electrolytes. No, it's it's it is delicious. So when I quit, I'm not going to lie. When I quit drinking, my favorite thing in the world when I drank was a, a, a stiff margarita spicy. And okay. so I was like, how the heck? And I don't, I wasn't a how huge How am I going to get that? Yes. But how am I going to get like that fresh? This is, this is the freshest Gatorade flavor there. <laughs> it is. <laughs> It is pure freshness. No, it tastes it tastes really good. It tastes like it tastes like a vacation. Um <laughs> it's it's like a vacation in my mouth. Here we go. <laughs> this delicious green water. Oh my god. It is it is it is like an Airbnb. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my god. Just so it even it comes out. with a balcony. Yes. I mean, maybe you're going to absorb some of those electrolytes. E I ele Extracellular vesicles. It's, oh my God. No, no, no. I don't want random DNA. Go away. No. Ah. Oh my God. That, could you, I don't know. I really do feel like that's like a crime scene right there. Like, but like, you know, man, like imagine like a crime scene on a boat and they're like, or it's the extracellular vesicles and they're like captain you are just bonkers and it turns out no you he know captain right jack ballsteed was right it really was the extracellular vesicles um i don't know i just feel like the dna is everywhere and it's terrifying it's everywhere it's all it around is. us especially when you're swimming in the sea soup the sea soup primordial sea soup. ooze mm -hmm. it really was like yes it gets more and more i'm more in the ooze and the primordial like, mm -hmm. the words are more convincing every day yeah mm -hmm. i wanted to do a doing? talk soup but primordial soup <laughs> I, 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 pitched, I, I don't know if you good. know this I don't know if you know this, you but I've got about shows all the time, like a hundred different. I'm not even kidding. I've got like a hundred. Some of them are terrible because well, I like have I to knew... be. It's like startups, yeah. you know, yeah. you just got to keep throwing them out there. Maybe one Single, of them. Single, will... childless and loving it. I mean, that was a good one. That was. <laughs> I, I pitched that to TLC. <laughs> Living my um... best life. <laughs> Hashtag. <Yeah. laughs> With green water, it's a. Uh... Vacation in your in mouth. In my mouth. I yes. like to put this flavor in my mouth parts. It tastes like sunshine mm. and a bikini. It is, uh, <laughs> it's 
delicious. I'm not gonna. I freaking love this stuff. It's it's, it's a, a cucumber in a plastic jug. Oh dear lord! <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I I should just make it my my own way, and that would basically be putting a cucumber in yeah a jug with some stevia, and that's it. <laughs> People would come over and say, what's that? You go, it's my cucumber jugs. This is my artisan water. <laughs> my artisan cucumber water. Oh, you could sell that in Portland. No problem. I absolutely could. Yeah. I feel like it's like I could, it's like kombucha. Like I really feel like I could do like artisan Gatorade. Yeah, you could have oh like my a God. pop up with your artisan water. and It's got electrolytes. It's what plants crave and your pancreas. Have some. I think my spleen likes it. Mm. <laughs> I think you're split. I, Steve, Steve definitely likes it. That's, good That's what spleen. you named. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is my spleen. His name is Steve. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Steve. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Somebody asked me that the other day. Is there a body part that you have not given a weird name to? And I think I think that's what I said. I think I called my spleen, or maybe I said my pancreas. I call Steve. Mm. Just a, it was a dumb dumb joke, because I have like dumb you know DNA satchels or you know sweater cows or whatever, <laughs> or body parts. You know. Wait, wait. You're utterly can. You're, you're, ah! You're <laughs> Stop milking it. Uh, oh, is that a cat? Did I hear Cappy? It, yes, Cappy's like, what are you doing? Meow. The cats are, what are you doing, Cappy? She's is staring there more at the than corner one cat? and meowing now. Yeah, Stella, she's around here somewhere. Oh, oh that's the other, yeah. The other cat. I don't know where. where. I just hear meowing. I think Cappy's just staring at the corner now because that's a thing cats do. Someone died in your house. <laughs> Isn't that what it is? Cats stare at That's the That's what they're what saying. What does that mean? It's a dead person. I see dead people. I remember reading some book when I was probably about my son's age, maybe a little bit younger, but it was all about how you could, like, if you wanted to see a ghost, you had to follow your cat around and look between your cat's ears whenever they were staring someplace. So I would sneakily follow my cats around and try not to bother them while they were staring at walls. And then I'd go stare between the ears, see if I could see dead people too. It never worked. Do you tell and a lot of people this story? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, all the time. It's just a common did story. Did your parents, did, did people see, did your parents see you do this? Were they like, Kiki? <laughs> Staring at walls with the cats. Like, where, where's Kiki? Ah, oh, staring at a wall with a cat. Yep. <laughs> that is so cute, though. Things I love that you that. do when you grow up in the country. There's not much to do. Where did you grow up? Uh, Central Valley of California. I, out Which in the town? middle of, outside of Stockton. Uh, little <gasps> Linden, California. Oh, yeah. Yes. But yes, I grew up, my, uh, my family's house is like surrounded by fields. Oh, swam gosh. in ditches. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine the extracellular vesicles in ditches? Oh, so many in the ditches. Oh my god. So not only that, but your sperm count is way low. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. <laughs> Between were you how were how were you exposed to insecticides? Well, you know. <laughs> Swimming in ditches. Swimming in ditches. <laughs> I didn't have a pool. It seemed reasonable. I hope reasonable. that's the name of your memoir. <laughs> that would be a good one, actually. Women in ditches. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. I mean, well, I grew up here in Los Angeles, and I used to play in, in the like my favorite. I love playing in the crawl space of my house. I thought that was fun, <laughs> which is disgusting and terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah, I would go in and I'd be like, well, not. I mean, I didn't do it a lot, but I did it enough where I was like, oh, there's a black widow. That's cool. Burp, 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 burp. You know, like, what? Don't Are bug you... it. Yeah, exactly. Poke it. Set it on fire. Um, things. No, I love them. I, I, I actually used to play the game where I would, um, we had a pet cemetery in our backyard where Ooh. we would, yeah, I know. We buried all our pets in the backyard. Um, whoever lives at 93, 
9354 Encino Avenue. Don't dig up the area behind around the mulberry tree because you're going to get a lot of dead we chickens, have a cats, serial frogs. Killer. <laughs> Seriously, just murdering lots yeah. of weird animals. This no. one only had one eye. Um, that would be punky. No, just kidding. I don't, I never had a punky, but yeah. So we had a, a pet cemetery. What was my point? Oh, and we had, we put rocks on top of the dead pets. And one of the, I would play the game of, I would leave the rocks there for like two months. I just found some weed on my desk. <laughs> yep. That's weed. Next Hello, to California. a mustache. Oh my Next God. Next to this, a mustache. Just, just had to point that out. But yeah, I would play the game of leaving the rock there and then I would flip it over and I would get so excited if I found a black widow. Like that would be like, oh. ah, that's like, you know, it was like a game. Like that's like the most points. If you find a black widow, you are awesome. You win. You're golden. I was like, yeah. Um, I also was definitely like very much afraid of the Russians as a small child, which is funny when your name is Natalia. Oh, that's um, true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My last name's but Reagan. Was, but it so makes, it's also, it makes sense, you know. Yeah. You know, like, connections there during the Cold War. But I dug a six yes. foot hole in my backyard <laughs> to build a, because I wanted to build a bomb shelter. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad was like, he found it. It was hidden behind this Whoa. hibiscus tree. <laughs> and he was like, what the fuck? Excuse my French. What the fuck is this and i was like it's the bomb shelter dad he was like what are you talking about i'm gonna save us i said the russians are coming and he's like they're not coming to northridge california in the san fernando valley like what is wrong with you i was confused (laughs) but you know the russians did come to the united states they just came in the form of a orange hate monster Many years later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Many yeah, years they infi- later. Yeah, yeah. They infiltrated Thanks. in a different way. So but, yeah, anyways. All yeah. Things. Yes. Did you at least spell so cemetery correctly? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just Where's reading. With an S, bad things happen. Well, make sure to get that drug use content. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm terrible. I don't even like, I'm such a, my life is so boring. That's why it's really funny that these things have showed up. And all of a sudden drawer. you're like, what is this? Hello. I know. <laughs> Like my day-to-day life is really quite, you know, sober. I don't, I don't know if I believe you. I know, right? I, I would. I wouldn't believe. <laughs> that's it. That's just. That's a. That's not a cucumber jug. That is. <laughs> this is one hundred percent pure ayahuasca. <laughs> this is this is this is mescaline mes- mixed with peyote, mixed with San Pedro cactus and acid water. No, it's not. It's just, it's just wholesome, wholesome, pure. Catering. <laughs> My boyfriend, he purchased this at Seven Eleven last night, or at least I thought he did. I Maybe it was did. from a right. shaman down the street named Raul. He's a very nice shaman. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Oh god. Mm. Mm. I'm seeing my drinking my orange water. Actually. What's that? Like, yeah. What's what do we got there? There's this water with um orange flavored Mio. Oh yeah. Like a flavored additive. Those are good. Put it. I like them. It's got B vitamins. Oh. <laughs> You are beautiful with them B vitamins. Oh, that's good. No, it's so good. Bad. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to. That's my. You know. That's my orange water. I like it. It's tasty. It's a little bit more exciting than regular water. Mm-hmm. But I make it in my kitchen. My this is good. <laughs> Raul. Raul makes <laughs> Raul. <it in> his, <laughs> his bathtub in Panorama <laughs> City, <laughs> California. Just a mere five miles away, it is local. <laughs> Locally sourced. <laughs> Locally sourced. <laughs> Wholesome Gatorade water. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, he we'll learned this to... recipe from his, <laughs> his, his, his shaman guide, um, yeah. <laughs> his, his training guide. Yeah. <laughs> His name was Kevin. He's actually he's he's from Ohio. Oh. 
<laughs> oh man, I yeah, because in New York everybody was going to yes. do ayahuasca on the weekends, and it was always like somebody like named Kevin. <laughs> You know what I mean? From Ohio. And I'm just like, we're going to have this really, the spiritual experience. And it's going to be, and yes, and it's, it's guided by Kevin. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Broskies. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, anybody can, I get it. You can do what you, you got to do what you got to do. Not everyone can afford the flight to wherever you may go. But still, I mean, it might be up. Kevin's house down the down the street, you know. Yeah, just down exactly. the hall, maybe. Take a hang glider yeah. there, you yeah. know. Pop a saddle on. Where is she? Raisin. I mean, yeah. Where'd she go, Raisin? Raisin, yippee ki yay, yippee ki yay, mother pugger. <laughs> she's a little mother little pugger, rippy ki yay. She, <laughs> she's such a little fat weasel. Where'd she go, Raisin? <laughs> she's she's done. No. she's like I, I, I I'm just. She's probably pooped the bed. I don't know. That's oh, okay. gosh. No, she, she's a she's a, a good little widge, little good. Yeah, you know, squidge widge. She is. She's, she's very gelatinous. <laughs> Comes back to that word all the time. <laughs> <laughs> gelatinous. That's my back gelatinous of dog. <laughs> Babies, dogs. Dog. I know, little, little doggy, little, little little dog. Yeah, I do love her. Oh, I went to meet yeah. her someday too. Yeah, we will have we will have Come meetings and pet what? sharings. We shall share pets. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, I don't know what that entails, other than I don't know. You say hi to my dog, and I say yes. hi to yours. Oh wait, what is just happening? The Gatorade reminds me of my older brother. <laughs> He made a bunch of vodka and Gatorade. That's really funny. I actually, I'm not going to lie. When I did drink, I did make a margarita with the lemon lime. <laughs> and I'm not proud of it. <laughs> I'm not proud of this, but I have used the strangest, like Gatorade as a mixer. So yes, that is my, I'm, that is, I mean, that is seriously like, that. that's the lowest yeah. for margarita. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it contains the lemon, the lime, the salt. Yeah. The salt, <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's like the, the whole thing. Or there's the do Rita, which Todd, Todd Disatel, my co-host on Bigfoot Bounty, he would make the do Rita, the, 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 the tequila with the Mountain Dew. I don't know. I feel like, and then like, you know, growing up with my dad, you knew never to drink out of his water bottle. Because <laughs> that was. That's not water. 90% of the time, that was vodka. That was like sky vodka. You're like that's warm. I and made not the water swigging my dad's water bottle as a child and being like that was dumb, you know, because the water bottles actually weren't even the thing. This is no. this is how old I am. They remember when water bottles came on the scene? Thank it you. was like a thing in high school. Yeah, like all oh, of a sudden, yeah. Cappy, I want to say Cappy. hi to you, my yeah. love. She's like, I'm gonna, I'm looking cute, and like, hi, hello. Cappy, can I love you in a way that's appropriate for a human to love a tabby cat that it is soft like a chinchilla? With her belly. <laughs> she's all like, Disney. Oh, oh my God, she's got a soft underbelly and she needs to be loved. Yes, she does. But she says she I doesn't like it. She's like, no, now I will slip and slide away. Stop it. You, I must be loved on my own terms. <laughs> <laughs> Can relate, Cappy. Can Fine. relate. Fine. Yes. I'll get the cat consent next time I pick you up. Yeah. Yes. Gotta get that form. Get her signing it with her little mm -hmm. mark. <laughs> I guess why my side hurts where I am. You know I had pet chickens know, during... Bull. Do you know about the chickens? You had chickens during the pandemic? Yeah. I, mean, I remember you. Yes. Yes. You posted pictures of the chickens. Lots of the... Yeah. Because they started... Yes. Carol started laying eggs on my desk. Because that's a great place. It was to lay eggs. the weirdest thing of my life to have. Like that was, <laughs> it was so odd. I mean, my life is already weird and you know strange. But I moved into that apartment in January 2020, not having a clue that there were there was a ro a rooster, a giant, like one of the most largest resplendent cocks I've ever seen. He was yes. so big. He had tree trunks for legs. Ooh. Like his big. His name was Audrey because they thought 
he was a little female chick. But then not. So, but still Audrey. That's fine. Huge. Yeah. And there were two yes. chickens. And then he died a month into me being there. And then they became, they needed a new rooster. And I stepped up. As you do. As I do. But they were cuddly, cuddly, cuddly girls. Cuddly they wanted to, chickens? Oh, my God. The most, um, and, and it's a sad I story. That. My landlord gave them to me and then his girlfriend got jealous and demanded them back. And so oh. it became like a great chicken war of Red Hook, Brooklyn. But they, every afternoon at like 5 p.m., I would lay down in bed. They would like, I would take a break from work and they would jump up on me and they would sit on me and they would like <gasps> cuddle. Yeah. Those little they were, hands. They yeah. were my friends. They were my friends. My honey chickens. They were the I, best. That's, oh, that's oh. ridiculous that there was jealousy of chickens involved. What? Oh, oh. The I, don't I like have the, the way that she loves you. She loves you more than she loves me. I would. I, it was about, it was like the weirdest geriatric foreplay. I mean, like the way they were. <laughs> I was, I was like, you guys get a room. I, I, I this doesn't. This is not I, to do with me. She accused just, me of like having a thing with him. And I'm like, he looks like Santa. And I am not into Santa. Like he was 70. She was 62. But you're taking care of the chickens and the chickens love you. Yeah. 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 So anyways, it was a, oh, it was a thing. Oh. But they were good. Sure, girl. Carol and Jeanette. Did it, did it ruffle some feathers? Ah, that was an excellent one. Mm -hmm. mm, I miss my baby girls. Oh, little, little buddies. Yeah, chickens. So your chickens are ornery, Aaron Lore. That's, yeah. Bless you. I had a chicken named Doo Wop as a child who was a raging B I T C H. She was not nice. So I get that. Are you, yeah, Doo Wop was not a nice chicken. I mean, Doo Wop chicken. was not a nice chicken. No. I had, I had chickens when I was growing up. Um, and we had one rooster. I've told the uh, everyone here before about um, the rooster, killer rooster. He was Killer. meany. Yeah, he was mean. But the chickens were great, and I would take, and they gave us eggs, and it was great. But Aww. then Killer Rooster would go around attacking people everywhere. And so. Well, why I, were they there? <laughs> why were the people there? I don't why know. Why were they there? The rooster Killer. was just protecting his hens. He was just doing Aww, his job as a rooster. You know, he was my baby. And then when. Killer when, Rooster. <laughs> yeah, and then when the pack of dogs came through and killed the whole flock of hands i was at the window going how is killer rooster is killer rooster still alive oh my god was yeah. he no he didn't he was not no. oh no i'm so sorry killer rooster was no more That's my dad so was sad. very happy though because yeah he was no longer attacked by the rooster but ah. <laughs> <laughs> copy that yeah, <laughs> this is true. Yeah, uh, we had ducks as a kid too, which is like I had a lot of weird livestock for living in the suburbs. Yeah, that's like, yeah, it's interesting it to have that many animals in the backyard. It, yeah, it was, <laughs> and they would eat each, you know, like the ducks, the male, the, the dad, it was George and Melissa were our ducks, and then they had ducklings, and then George killed them one by one, and they all were named after Three's Company characters. It was like Chrissy, Janet, and Larry. Oh I don't even think gosh. I had a Jack. Yeah. You're so. like, I'm just waiting. I'm just just waiting for them to reproduce one of the episodes. It's going to be I good. I know. One of them. <sighs> ah. Yes. I will let you go with your pug and I'm have a go. good night and you take too. her out. And yes. This was so much fun. Thanks for having so me. So much fun. Oh my okay. gosh. Yeah. Well, bye everyone. Thank you so much for being so great. Yes. You guys are awesome. We are and going to say good night now. Yes. And I'll see you next time. Yes. I hope there will be a next time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be wonderful. That'd be fun. I'll bring mustaches. And everyone out there, more mustaches. We will, it'll be the mustaching questions hour. Ah. <clears throat> or we could put mustaches on our eyebrows. Oh, or... here. <laughs> This is for your husband. Oh, looking, look into my. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> How are those eyebrows? 
Um, I, this is what's like really hip right now. You got to have the mono brow and it's just like one big fat. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to, on that note, I'm going to go walk my pug and that's not a euphemism. Uh, No, it's not because we know we've met your pug, your sack of gelatinous goo. (sighs) Everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And in the meantime, until next week, make sure y'all Stay curious, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay lucky, because that's a nice thing. We'll see you again next week. Bye.